Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. Um, I, uh, I found another website that has some of the more fun holidays, so I'm going to start saying those. Uh, but um, I was scrolling through the list quickly, and I just happened to catch um, that January 9th, which was actually the day that Carrie Weeder was on, um, uh, was Word Nerd Day. So, uh, hey, happy Word Nerd, belated Word Nerd Day two months later. Uh, so maybe we'll have to do something special for that day. Also, now that I'm thinking about it, that was really, really close to when I first started this podcast in 2019. Uh, so that was a, a happy coincidence. Um, okay, so the first word is casus belli. Uh, it's two words, C-A-S-U-S, second word, B-E-L-L-I, casus belli, or you could say casus belli, noun from uh, circa 1841, an event or action that justifies or allegedly justifies a war or conflict. Uh, this is New Latin, uh, and it means occasion of war, casus belli. Next is everyone's favorite word. It is cat, C-A-T. When you're talking about how to spell stuff, you all always use cat. How do you spell cat? C-A-T. Um, and, you know, cats are great, and the internet is all, all a quiver with cats. Uh, this is the first form of the word noun from before the 12th century. 1A, a carnivorous mammal long domesticated as a pet and for catching rats and mice. The scientific name is Felis catus. No, how, none of us know the scientific name of the cat, but it is very simple and nice. Felis catus. 1B, any of a family of carnivorous, usually solitary and nocturnal mammals. Oh, that's the end of that sentence. Then there's a bunch of parentheses as the domestic cat, lion, tiger, leopard, jaguar, cougar, wildcat, lynx, and cheetah. I feel like this should be sung. Also, I just posted yesterday the, uh, I think it was called the caracal. That's another lynx-like, lynx-like cat. The domestic cat, the lion, and the tiger, leopard, jaguar, cougar, wildcat, lynx, and cheetah. Oh, and the family name is Felidae. Two, a malicious woman. They are called cats. Uh, also, um, why am I blanking on the thing? Cougar. Cougar, uh, that is a, you know, a lot of women have taken that word, as you know, to define them. Number three, a strong tackle used to hoist an anchor to the cat head of a ship. Cat head. Are we, when, when are we going to see that? Not for a little while. For uh, A, synonym is cat boat. Uh, cat boat, one word. Uh, and for B, synonym is catamaran. Are the catamaran and the cat boat similar? Probably, because they're both under number four. Uh, number five is, uh, the synonym is cat o nine tails It is cat hyphen O apostrophe hyphen nine hyphen tails. Cat o nine tails We'll see that later. I've heard of it. Can't remember what it is. Number six, synonym is catfish. Seven, A, a player, A, or devotee of jazz. Ooh, yeah, that's a cool cat. That reminds me of on um, Pee Wee's Playhouse. He had some cool jazz, puppet jazz players, and one of them, I think, at least one of them, was literally a cat. Okay, and then 7B, the synonym is guy. Just If this is some guy, you can just call him a cat. And uh, let's see, this is from Latin, cata, which means cat. Next is the second form of cat. It is a verb from 1681. First is intransitive, to search for a sexual mate, often used with the word around. You go cat around. Do people still use this? I don't think so. Uh, the transitive definition says to bring up to the cat head. And what are you bringing up? You are bringing up an anchor to the cat head. That must be just, you know, a part of the boat where the anchor is somewhere. Um, the third form of cat is an abbreviation for one, catalog, and two, catalyst. Next is cat again with a capital C. This is a trademark. It is used for Caterpillar Tractor. The company, they have lots and lots of cool machinery called Caterpillar. They're called Caterpillar and you just call them cats. Next is another abbreviation, all cap, C-A-T, one, Clear air turbulence. 
Two, computerized axial tomography. Well, there's a lot going on there. Next, we have a prefix, kata or cat or cath, C-A-T-A, C-A-T, or C-A-T-H. Uh, this it doesn't give me a year. Um, it means down. Wait, that's it? just means down. Uh, the examples are cation, cation, C-A-T-I-O-N. I don't know how you pronounce that word. Um, also, cathode. Uh, okay, so let's look at the etymology, see if we can figure out more. Um, it is from the Greek word kata, which means down or in accordance with, or by, by, um, akin to the old Welsh kant uh, with the Hittite word kata. Yeah, so it just means down. I don't know. We, we Maybe when we get to kachin or cathode, we'll learn a little bit more. Next, we have catabolism. Noun from 1876. Degradative? How do you say this? Degradative? I'll just say that. Degradative metabolism involving the release of energy and resulting in the breakdown of complex materials within the organism. And the examples of the materials are proteins or lipids. And then compared to anabolism, A-N-A, Balism, anabolism, and this is catabolism. And uh, I think back in the A's, it probably said compared to catabolism. What that one means, I don't remember, but it is, I think, the opposite. Uh, catab- catabolic is an adjective, and catabolically, catabolically, yep, is an adverb. Uh, so this is from the Greek kataboli, which means throwing down. Ooh, we're going to throw down. We're going to kataboli. Uh, from kataboline, which means to throw down. From kata, the kata prefix. Ah, see, this is where it comes into play. The kata prefix, which means down, plus baleen, which means to throw. Throw down. And there's more at the word devil. I guess the devil loves to throw down. Next is catabolite. Noun from circa 1909. A product of catabolism. So let me see if I can figure out how the down things come in. It says degradative metabolism. So I think that's metabolism, like it's going down, something like that. I don't know. Uh, some of you smarter people can describe it to me. Next is catabolize. This is a verb from circa 1926, uh, starting with transitive, to subject to catabolism. And then intransitive says to undergo catabolism. Next is catacresis. Catacresis. Uh, C-A-T-A-C-H-R-E-S-I-S. Catacresis. Noun from 1550. One, use of the wrong word for the context. Oh, you goofy. You goofed up. You used the wrong word. Number two, use of a forced and especially paradoxical figure of speech. And the example is blind mouths. Well, mouths can't be blind, so that's why it's uh, it doesn't make sense. It's paradoxical. It's catacresis. Catacristic or catacristical, those are adjectives. This is from the Greek word catacresis, which means misuse. And then cas- catacristic. Cat, oh geez, from katakristai, which means to use up or misuse. From kata, the prefix kata, which we know means down, and kristai, which means to use. So if, uh, I don't know, I mean, I, the down part doesn't really make sense to me, but, uh, you know, at the time when they made up the word, it, it did make sense. You're using it, but it's down. It's it's bad. It's wrong. It's, you know, I'm just I'm just justifying things here. Uh, okay, I would love to, to get more of, uh, more examples than blind mouths, but that's a pretty good one. Next is cataclysm, noun from 1599. Number one, synonyms are flood and deluge. Number two, the synonym is the 3A definition for the word catastrophe. Three, a momentous and violent event marked by overwhelming upheaval and demolition. And then broadly, an event that brings great changes. Well, I would say that 2020 was a cataclysm with the pandemic. That brought about major changes for for decades to come, I think. Cataclysmal 
or cataclysmic are adjectives and cataclysmically is an adverb. Adverb. Cataclysmically. Uh, this is from Latin cataclysmos, from Greek cataclysmos, uh, from the verb cataclysine, which means to inundate, from kata plus klizine, which means to wash. So wash down, I'm saying. Uh, and then there's more at the word clister, C-L-Y-S-T-E-R. Okay. Next we have catacomb, noun from the 15th century, one, a subterranean cemetery of galleries with recesses for tombs, uh, used usually in plural, the catacombs. I've been in the catacombs um, underneath Paris. It's very cool. Number two, something resembling a catacomb as 2A, an underground passageway or group of passageways. 2B, a complex set of interrelated things, as in the endless catacombs of formal education. That is a quote from uh, Kingman Brewster, who, I don't know why it says, but they it says that they died in 1988. Why that's important, I'm not entirely sure. But hey, Kingman Brewster died in 1988, who said, The Endless Catacombs of Formal Education. This is from, uh, it's from some other languages, nothing terribly interesting. Next is catadioptric. Catadioptric. C-A-T-A-D-I-O-P. T-R-I-C, adjective from 1723, belonging to, produced by, or involving both the reflection and the refraction of light. So it deals with the reflection and refraction, you know, both sides, catadioptric. Not sure what it is exactly, what an example of that is, but, but you know a little bit more now. And then our last word is catadromous or catadromous, C A. T-A-D-R-O-M-O-U-S, catadromous, adjective from 1880, living in fresh water and going to the sea to spawn, as in catadromous eels, and then compared to anadromous. Uh, so, yeah, what is the opposite? Why, what is, I can't, I can't figure, living in fresh water, that would anadromous be living in seawater, salt water? Um, or they don't go somewhere to spawn. I'm not sure. Um, let's see. It is from kata plus dromis, which means dr oh, that's not helpful at all. Okay. Well, we had today uh, Cass's belly, cat, cat, C A T, kata, catabolism, catabolite, catabolize, catacresis, cataclysm, catacomb, catadioptric, and catadromous. Oh, boy, what are we going to pick? I mean, you know, we can definitely post a picture of a cat on Instagram. Uh, this, let's see. Which which one is jumping out at me? Sometimes one is real obvious. Sometimes they're not so obvious. Um, I don't know. I guess just because we're sort of living through this time, maybe I'll pick cataclysm as the word of the episode. Uh, I don't remember if I sang anything. Maybe I did. Maybe I didn't. I feel like I did. Oh, yeah, I sang the whole uh, cat thing. I'm good. I don't need to force myself to do something stupid. I mean, it's all stupid. Okay, thank you very much. Oh, wait, 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 wait. We got to talk about the holidays, right? Um, in, uh, let's see, I think all these goofy holidays are in the U.S. It is Oatmeal Nut Waffle Day. Not just Waffle Day, Oatmeal Nut Waffle Day. Okay. It is, um, it's still Lent in Lithuania. It is the day of restoration of independence from the Soviet Union in 1990. In Lesotho, it is, I hope I say this correct, I probably won't say this correctly, it is Moshosho Day, or Moshushu, or Moshoe Shoe. I don't know how to pronounce it, but I, will, I like to say Moshosho Day in Lesotho. And uh, let's see, is there anything else? It is World Kidney Day. Take care of your kidneys. It is Lailat al Mirage. I'm not sure what that is. It is in Lithuania. What does that say? Independence Restoration Day or Indep? I don't know. Something got messed up there. I think that's what it's saying. Um, it is Mahashivaratri Day in India. And uh, yeah, I think that is all we have today. Um, okay. Thank you very much for listening to this podcast. And until next time, this is Spencer dispensing information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the podcast called 
the dictionary. It's the dictionary. Maybe I should just make up a, a theme song at the beginning of each one, something a little bit different. Would that be fun for you? Probably not. Okay, the first word is catafalk or catafalk. C A T A F A L Q U U. No, no, there's no W. There's no W. Uh, L Q U E. Catafalk or catafalk. Noun from 1641. One, an ornamental structure sometimes used in funerals for the line and state of the body. An ornamental structure. Uh, okay, maybe we maybe we should find a picture of a catafalque. Number two, a pall covered coffin shaped structure used at requiem masses celebrated after burial. Um, this is from Italian catafalco, um, which uh, let's see is from the cata prefix, which probably means down, plus the Latin falla. Oh, sorry, catafalicum means scaffold. That's in vulgar Latin. Uh, and then kata plus fala, which means siege tower. All right, that's not really making sense to me, but that is what they say. Uh, next, we have Catalan or Catalan with a capital C. Noun from the 15th century. One, a native or inhabitant of Catalonia. Two, the Romance language of Catalonia, Valencia, Andorra, and the Balearic Islands. And then Catalan is also an adjective. Um, Catalan. That's a yeah. It's a part of Spain, I think. Uh, I think yes. It's a it's a part of Spain. Next is I mean it's more more than that, but yeah. Next we have Catalays or Catalays. Noun from 1901. A red crystalline enzyme that consists of a protein complex with hematin groups and catalyzes the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide into water and oxygen. And catalytic, catalytic is an adjective. I want to see a a, a, a catalytic, a, a catalytic, catalytic. You know, you know what I'm saying here. A catalytic that is doing some catalytic stuff. Uh, yes. Next is possibly, no, it's not related. It is a catalectic adjective from 1589, lacking a syllable at the end of a line in metrical verse or ending in an incomplete foot. Oh, I hate it when my foot is incomplete. Where'd that toe go? Uh, so this, oh, and catalectic is a noun. Uh, so this is from the Greek katalektikos from katalegin, which means to leave off, uh, which is from kata plus legin, which means to stop. Uh, and then there's more at the word slack. So uh, yeah, it's just uh, there's there's no end. The end has been chopped off, never finished, catalectic. Next is catalepsy, catalepsy. Noun from the 14th century, a trance-like state marked by loss of involuntary motion in which the limbs remain in whatever position they are placed. And then cataleptic is an adjective or a noun, and cataleptically is an adverb. This is from, let's see, Middle English, catalepsy, from Middle Latin, catalepsia, from Latin, catalepsis, from Greek, catalepsis, catalepsis, which means literally, literally means, I gotta flip those words, literally means act of seizing. From catalampanin, which means to seize. From kata plus lambanin, which means to take. And there's more at the word latch. Uh, it's, yeah, it's a, such an interesting, why why would this happen? What What is the situation where this would happen where you are in a trance-like state? Um but your limbs are staying in the position that they're in. Catalep catalepsy. Okay. It's interesting. Uh, next, we have catalexis. There's a lot of these words that are very similar, but there's a couple of a couple of letters that are different. So you got to be real careful with uh, how you spell them, how you say them, what the context is. We had catalectic, catalepsy, catalexis. Noun from... The catalexis. That's the that's the one we're on. Uh, this is a noun from 1830. Omission or incompleteness, usually in the last foot of a line in metrical verse, and that of course 
is related to catalectic. Uh, let's see this from uh, the Greek catalexis, which means close or close or cadence from catalegine. Next is catalog, C-A-T-A-L-O-G, or you can add a U-E at the end if you so wish, if you want to be a little bit fancier, probably British or French, catalog. Noun from the 15th century, one synonyms are list and register. 2A, a complete enumeration of items arranged systematically with descriptive details. Oh, how much I love a catalog. This book is very much like a catalog. Uh, I love it when things are ordered and you have some information. Uh, 2B, a pamphlet or book that contains such a list. 2C, material in such a list. This is from Middle English, catalog. Uh, from the Greek, katalogos. I'm skipping a few things. From catalegin, which means to list, enumerate. From kata plus legin, which means to gather or speak. And there's more at the word legend. And uh, legin, I think this also, uh, the word ledger might be related to this too. I'm not sure uh, because it can sort of be similar to a catalog. And uh, kata, legin, ledger, I don't know. That seems to make sense in my mind. Uh, So that was the first form of catalog. Now we have the second form of catalog. This is a verb from 1598. First is transitive. One, to make a catalog of. 2A, to enter in a catalog. 2B, to classify, as books are information, descriptively. To classify descriptively. And what are you classifying in a descriptive manner? Books or information or other things? Uh, Now we have intransitive. One, to make or work on a catalog. Two, to become listed in a catalog at a uh, specified price. As in, this stamp catalogs at $2. People don't talk like that. Catalogger is a noun. Uh, Oh boy, there's some joke in there with cats and loggers who are cutting down trees. A catalogger, I don't know, something. Do something with that. Make some art, send it to me, tag me, let me know. I want to see it. Okay, next we have Catalogue Raisonné. This has got to be French, right? Catalogue Raisonné. Two words. Raisonné is spelled R-A-I-S-O-N-N-E. And there's an accent over the E at the end. And then, of course, catalogue is spelled with a U-E. Noun from 1784 a systematic annotated catalog, especially a critical bibliography. I don't think it's being very critical. I think it, there, there's some other uh, meaning in this for this uh, form of critical. Um, and uh, this is French. Yes, it literally means reasoned catalog. It's uh, very reasonable. It's been reasoned. It's been discussed. It's been figured out. I'm not sure why, but it's uh, a, a certain kind of catalog. Next, we have catalpa, noun from circa 1730, any of a genus of North American and Asian trees of the bignonia, not begonia, bignonia family with pale showy flowers in terminal clusters. The genus name is also catalpa. This is from the uh, creek. Is that a, is that a, uh, what a creek? No, it's not in here. So Creek must be either a language or short for a language that I'm not familiar with. Um, but that word is also Catalpa with um, with a K, with an accent over one of the A's, with a line through an L. Um, also from Ika, which means head. Oh, uh, that is from, that is made by Ika, which means head, plus Talpa, which means wing. So head and wing. Um, I don't know. That, that's what it is. Uh, but I'm also curious what this creek word is. Literally creek, like a, a stream. And man, I don't know if you can hear, but my stomach is going. I got to eat some food. Um, okay, that is catalpa. Next is our last word of this episode. It is catalysis. Or no, it's not, it's not how you say it. Catalysis. C-A-T-A-L-Y-S-I-S. Catalysis. Noun from... 1836, 
a modification and especially increase in the rate of a chemical reaction induced by material unchanged chemically at the end of the reaction. Catalysis. This is from the Greek catalysis with a K, which means dissolution. From kataline, which means to dissolve. From kata plus line, which means to dissolve or release. And there is more at the word lose. L-O-S-E. It's losing things. So we had catafalc, catalan, catalase, catalectic, catalepsy, catalexis. Man, I got to remind myself what each of these are. Uh, catalog, catalog, raisonné, catalpa, and catalysis. I think I shall pick uh, catalepsy as the word of the episode. That is the one. It's a trance-like state marked by loss of voluntary motion in which the limbs remain in whatever position they are placed. Uh, yeah, if I, uh, if I use those words in my song, it makes it much easier for me. And then I just have to come up with some different singing thing because they're all the same, right? Catalepsy is when you're in a trance-like state marked by loss of voluntary motion in which the limbs remain in whatever position they are placed. I don't know. That was the first thing I thought of. Okay, well, today is March 12th. And, um, oh, I did not uh, go to the next link. Um, It is World Sleep Day. Can we just sleep all day, please? Um, It is the 24th day of Lent. Yes, it is still happening. We're just over halfway through. Um, It is also World Sleep Day in Australia, Canada, the UK, and in India. But if it's World Sleep Day, shouldn't it be in all the countries? I don't know. In Argentina, it is National Shield Day. In Sweden, it is Crown Princess Victoria's Name Day. In, oh, yep, you got to go to the next, the next page. Um, It is also Arbor Day in China, Arbor Day in Taiwan. It is the Aztec New Year. In Mauritius, it is National Day. It is also World Day Against Cyber Censorship, so that's good. And then uh, in Zambia, it is Youth Day. And then what fun holiday is it today? It is Alfred Hitchcock Day. I love it. That's cool. I uh, I really haven't seen many uh, Alfred Hitchcock movies. Uh, So maybe I should watch an Alfred Hitchcock movie on March 12th. All right. Well, I think that's all we got to say for today. Uh, Thank you very much for listening to me. And until next time, this is Spencer dispensing information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. Oh, am I going to do a theme song for today? It's the dictionary. It's such a wonderful podcast. Okay, the first word is catalyst. C-A-T-A-L-Y-S-T. Noun from 1902. Sorry if I'm saying those too quickly for any of you who want to actually be paying attention and writing these down. I try to be slower, but you know, you, you, you can find these words. Also, it's in the uh, it's in the episode name. If you uh, if you found it, and if you're not blind, you can just read it right off of there. Catalyst. Uh, one, a substance that enables a chemical reaction to proceed at a usually faster rate, or under different conditions than otherwise possible. Uh, yes, it's a thing that helps things go along in a chemical way. I don't know. That didn't make sense. Um, the uh, the example for different conditions is at a lower temperature. Uh, So it is a thing that allows things to happen possibly at a lower temperature. That would be one example. Number two, an agent that provokes or speeds significant change or action. It is the thing that makes stuff happen. Sometimes in a way because it couldn't happen or it just makes it happen faster. Uh, Next we have catalytic adjective from 1836. Causing, involving, or relating to catalysis. That was the end of the last episode. Catalysis. And catalytic... Oh, boy. There's so many syllables in this word. Catalytically. Catalytic... Catalytically. That's how you say it. I'm thinking too hard on this one. Catalytically. That's an adverb. Next is catalytic converter. Two words. Noun from 1955. An automobile exhaust system component containing a catalyst that causes conversion conversion of harmful gases into mostly harmless products. The harmful gases are 
carbon monoxide, and uncombusted hydrocarbons. And the harmless products are water and carbon dioxide. We love our water and carbon dioxide. Uh, I feel like, is there a song with catalytic converter in there? Probably. I think it's an older song. I can't really think of it. I feel like it has some something like, you gotta, no. You, why, why are you going to start songs with you gotta? Um, Catalytic converter, catalytic converter, turning stuff, turning bad stuff into good stuff, catalytic converter. All right, next we have catalytic cracker, two words, noun from 1947, the unit in a petroleum refinery in which cracking is carried out in the presence of a catalyst. I really was hoping that it would be a a snacky cracker. Next we have catalyze. Verb from 1890. Uh, First is transitive, and I think it's only transitive. Number one, to bring about the catalysis of. What are you bringing about the catalysis of? A chemical reaction. Two, synonyms are bring about and inspire. Three, to alter significantly by or as if by catalysis, as in innovations in basic chemical theory that have catalyzed the field. That's from Newsweek. Catalyzer is a noun. Next is catamaran. Um, And I think we mentioned this, yes, a couple episodes ago in the word cat. Uh, One of the synonyms was catamaran. Um, And one of the also synonyms, one of the also synonyms. Is that how people speak? That's how I speak. Uh, The other synonym was cat boat, which it's going to be a little bit before we see that. But uh, I'm curious about that one. Catamaran is a noun from 1673, a vessel with twin hulls and usually a deck or superstructure connecting the hulls. Uh, This is from a Tamil word, katumaran, with a K and two Ts, uh, from katu, which means to tie, and maran, which means tree or wood. Uh, So, I mean, I think it's fairly obvious that they would make two boats out of trees wood you know is it uh is it a hollowed out tree is it you know are they building a boat out of the tree the wood um either way that is maram and then uh katu means to tie so they tied them together and that's it's a very obvious how they got this name catamaran um there is a picture of a catamaran um it's you know two small boats with a piece in the middle and then a a couple of sails and then uh, there's a guy on there Looks like he's riding it like a um, like a sail, um, a wind sail, you know, which is like a surfboard with a sail on it. But it's uh, it's bigger, bigger sail. He's got two boats. Uh, also, catamarans can get much bigger. You know, you can fit a whole bunch of people on there. I feel like maybe it was on a catamaran once. Can't remember. Um, they also have. I don't think this would really be the proper name, but um, they have trimarans. I think I, I think I've heard of that. Where it's that would be three boats hooked up together usually they have like a mesh in between them so you can like lay down and sunbathe if you want um you know all, all the fancy people have boats i don't got no boat uh let's see that is good for catamaran next is catamenia noun from 1750 uh the synonym is menses uh and uh catamenial is an adjective uh, so menses, that is the, you know, women get the, the monthly menses. That's one of the names for it. I had no idea that, uh, catamenia was another word for that. This is from the Greek, um, uh, catamenia, which is the neutral plural of catamenios, which means monthly. Uh, that is from kata, which means by in this case, by, um, and then mean, men, which means month. So, you know, by month, every month. Uh, There's more at the prefix, kata, which uh, we talked about means uh, down. Yeah, that was down. Um, And then also, I lost my place. Also, moon. Yeah, catamenia. Nobody uses this anymore, so maybe we should bring that back. Next is catamite, noun from 1593. A boy kept by a pederast, which I think is not good. Um, all right, we're maybe we're, we're going to learn more about that in the P's, but I think this is not not a good thing, probably. Uh, I've heard of the word, but I really don't know what it means, to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, so this is from Catamitas, 
which means Ganymede from Etru uh, the Etruscan word Catamite. Uh, yeah, that's about that. Uh, moving on to Catamount. Uh, noun from 1664. Any of various wild cats as A, the number one definition for the word cougar, and B, the synonym lynx. So lynx or cougar. Um, this is short for our next word, uh, which is cat a mountain. Cat hyphen a hyphen mountain. So it is basically probably like it's cat of the mountain, cougars, lynx, catamount. Um, but they, they combined it all into one word. Uh, so here we go with cat a mountain, noun from the 15th century, any of various wild cats. Yep. Um, and it is just uh, from, uh, oh, Middle English cat of the mountain. And then mountain has an E at the end. That's how they used to say that back in the day. Next is cat and mouse. Three words, noun from 1675. Behavior like that of a cat with a mouse. As A, the act of toying with or tormenting something before destroying it. I will destroy you. B, a contrived action involving constant pursuit, near captures, and repeated escapes. Uh, and then broadly, an evasive action. As in, played a game of cat and mouse with the police. Well, that's not very smart. You shouldn't do that. Uh, next is catafora with a PH. Noun from 1976. The use of a grammatical substitute that has the same reference as a following word or phrase. The example of a grammatical substitute is a pronoun. Uh, but, you know, you didn't give me an example. I would love an example because I don't know what this is. Uh, next we have cataphoresis. Cataphoresis. Mm, this is a, um, oh, it's a noun from 1889. The synonym is electrophoresis. I don't know what that is, but uh, cataphoretic is an adjective. Um, and then our last word is cataphoric. C A T A. P-H-O-R-I-C, adjective, from 1968, of or relating to cataphora. That was the uh, the use of a grammatical substitute that has the same reference as a following word or phrase. Um, so that was the first part of the definition, of or relating to cataf cataphora, wait, cataphora, especially being a word or phrase that takes its reference from a following word or phrase. So we're getting a little bit more information. Uh, and the example is the word her in before her Jane, before her, Jane saw nothing but desert. Oh, I so wanted that to be dessert. Uh, so the word her is uh, the cataphora. It is cataphoric. Um, and why is it being a word or phrase that takes its reference from a following word? Ah, okay. So um, the word her is the pronoun and it is about a thing that is later in the sentence, which would be the word Jane. That's her name. Before her, Jane saw nothing but desert. Um, so that is what a cataphora is. Uh, and then it says compared to anaphoric, which is going to be the opposite in some way. But is it? would that be the... It's a pronoun that is after the word. So Jane saw... Jane and then her would come later in the sentence. I don't know what an example is. I can't think of one off the top of my head, but you understand what I'm saying. Okay, so we had catalyst, catalytic, catalytic converter, catalytic cracker, okay, catalyze, catamaran, catamenia, catamite, catamount, catamountain, cat and mouse, cataphora, that's how you say that word, cataphoresis, and cataphoric. Uh, who? well, uh, let's see. I think I want to pick just because I want to pick catalyst as the word of the episode. It's a thing that makes other stuff happen. Um, yeah, they, they happen all the time. You can call lots of things catalysts. Um, I actually know what the catalyst was for this podcast. Um, I was uh, I agreed to be a guest on another podcast. Uh, it was one of his exclusive Patreon episodes, and um, it was the They Might Be Giants podcast called This Might Be a Podcast, which you should go listen to if you're a fan of They Might Be Giants or if you want to learn more about them, which you should. And um, it was, I think, the very first of his Patreon exclusives um, where we talked about a few songs from one of the guy's uh, uh, solo albums. Anyway, 
I had been wanting to get an external recorder anyway, and uh, so it was a good excuse for me to buy one. And um, I didn't have a mic yet. I borrowed a mic from work, and then I bought a mic later. But I was like, well, I got this stuff, and I've been thinking about podcasting or recording. I've always wanted to do stuff like that. Um, And so that was just a good excuse, and it has come in very, very handy. Um, okay, so does that mean that I need to sing a song about catalysts? I did, I mean, I sang a couple songs. Um, uh, catalysts are things that happen to make other stuff happen. Yeah, that's fine. Um, all right, so today is March 13th. It is, uh, the founding of Mexico, uh, and then dash Tenochtitlan. I, I, I never, will never say that word correctly. Tenochtitlan, that's in Mexico. Um, it is also, um, we're, we're on the correct day, right? March 13th. Yes. Um, it is Kazuga Matsuri, um, which is in Japan. In Thailand, it is National Elephant Day and it is Africa Scout Day. And our fun holiday, it is Jewel Day. Is that you have to listen to the music of Jewel or do you have to celebrate you know, rubies and sapphires and diamonds. Probably the second one. All right, thank you very much for listening, and until next time, this is Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. We are at the top of page 194. Today is March 14th. It is, well, you know, I usually will save this for later, but today is Pi Day, P-I Day. There's no E, but... What people do is they eat pie on Pi Day. Why is it Pi Day? Because the number Pi starts with 3.14. And today is a 314 if you write it the American way. Um, So that's that's that. Um, I guess I should probably say some words too. Uh, Should I? Maybe maybe this would be the one episode where I don't say the words. Uh, No, I don't think I can do that. All right. So the first word is cataplasm, C-A-T-A-P-L-A-S-M. And boy, I think I'm hearing myself in my headphones a little bit too loud. Let's turn that down a little bit. Okay, I think that's good. This is a noun from circa 1540. We just have the synonym uh, pultis. I'm, I'm just going to say that's how it's pronounced. P-O-U-L-T-I-C-E, pultis. Sure, why not? This is from, let's see, from the Greek verb kataplasin, which means to plaster over, uh, which is from kata plus plasin, which means to mold, and there's more at the word plaster. Cataplasm. I just like that word. Next, we have cataplexy with an XY at the end. This is a noun from 1883. Sudden loss of muscle power. Following a strong emotional stimulus. What? That happens? If you have a strong emotional stimulus, your muscles stop working? Whoa. All right. This is from the Greek kataplesin, which is very similar to the last one, which is kataplesin. Uh, kataplesin or kataplesin means to strike down or terrify. Uh, yeah, I'd be terrified if that happened to me. Uh, from kata plus plisin, which means to strike, and there's more at the word plaint. It's like the word plant, but with an I in the middle, P-L-A-I-N-T. So that's an interesting concept, cataplexy, uh, which I think is actually going to probably be related somehow to uh, a couple of the words at the end of this episode. We'll get there. But first, before we get there, we have to talk about the word catapult, first form noun from 1577, one An ancient military device for hurling missiles. Number two, a device for launching an airplane at flying speed, as from an aircraft carrier. Oh, yeah, I think I've seen that. They don't have a lot of a, much of a runway on aircraft carriers, so they have to, um, they've got these wires and stuff attached to the wheel, uh, you know, at the, um, at the floor, you know, where the wheels are attached, and then it, like, shoots them forward so they can get a lot of extra speed real in a short amount of time. Um, it catapults them. This is from the Greek katapaltes. Katapaltes, which is from kata plus palin, which means to hurl. We are hurling it out. 
Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, we all know what catapults are. They're, they're cool. Maybe I'll post a picture. So that was the noun. Now we have the second form of catapult, which is a, tr- uh, it's a verb from 1848. To throw or launch by or as if by a catapult. And then intransitive says to become catapulted. I just like that idea that not that not that this happens, but the idea of a human being catapulted. It's usually not a human. It's usually pumpkins and rocks and things. Uh, what was that show? Ch- pump, pumpkin chunkin? Yeah, there's a whole thing there. They shoot they shoot uh, pumpkins with catapults. Uh, maybe trebuchets too. I don't know. Um, and then we have an example. He catapulted to fame. So yes, you could a human could be catapulted in that way. But I don't think any humans want to be catapulted by an actual catapult. All right. Well, that word is starting to sound weird. Let's move on to cataract. Uh, I think a lot of people just say cataract with no T at the end, but it's a cataract. This is a noun from the 14th century. Number one, a clouding of the lens of the eye or of its surrounding transparent membrane that obstructs the passage of light. Uh, So this is a thing that happens to a lot of older people usually, uh, and I think that they can fix it. I think, yeah, they get cataract surgery. Uh, I hope I never have to do this. Any time there's a knife or laser or anything going near the eye, it freaks me out. Uh, So I I hope I keep my eyes okay. I don't know if, I wonder if there's exercises or things that you can do uh, to to help not this make this not happen. I don't know. I know an optometrist. I should go ask her. Two a is obsolete. Synonym is water spout. Two b, um, it doesn't say obsolete. It uh, synonym is waterfall, especially a large one over a precipice. Two c, steep rapids in a river. I never knew that these water things were called cataracts. Uh, 2D, synonyms are downpour and flood, as in cataracts of rain. Also as in cataracts of information. Uh, So I guess it's, well, we could look at the etymology. What does this say? From the Latin cataracta, which means waterfall or portcullis. Uh, From the Greek cataracine, which means to dash down, which is from aracine, which means to strike or dash. Um, So yeah, it's, it's, a covering in some way. I mean, I, the idea of waterfall, portcullis, uh, downpour of rain, it's sort of covering and blocking the view. Um, even though that's not what the Greek one uh, means, I don't know, that that makes the most sense in my mind. There's a cataract of rain in front of my face. I don't know. Uh, this is a fun word. Cataractus is an adjective. Cataractus. Uh, yeah, I think that's good for that. Um, cool. Okay, next we have Qatar. C-A-T-A-R-R-H. It's spelled not a typical way that we spell things here in English. It is, uh, Qatar. Noun from the 15th century. Inflammation of a mucous membrane, especially one chronically affecting the human nose and air passages. Uh, Qataral is an adjective and Qatarali is an adverb. And let's see, this is from the Greek, katarin, uh, which means to flow down uh, from kata plus rin, which means to flow. And there's more at the word stream. And yes, uh, the, the kata prefix means down. Uh, all of these words so far have come from the very similar Greek words. Uh, they all they all start the same way. Um, so yeah, that, that's probably going to be a... A, um, a common theme through the rest of this episode, I think. Next, we have Katarine, C-A-T-A-R-R-H-I-N-E. So we added an I-N-E to the last one. Katarine, or no, actually, it's Katarine. Uh, adjective from 1863 of relating to or being any of a division of primates com- uh, comprising the old world monkeys, higher apes, and hominids that have the nostrils close together and directed downward, 32 teeth, and the tail, when present, never prehensile. Uh, And then compare to platyrine, P-L-A-T-Y-R-R-H-I-N-E. So that's something else. Uh, And then catarine is also a noun. So the etymology says this is from the Greek uh, katarin, uh, which means hook-nosed, uh, which is kata plus rin, 
or ris, which means nose. We know that from rhinoplasty, where you're getting a nose job. Uh, rhinos, you know, rhinos are named after that. They got a big nose, a big horn on the nose. Uh, okay, so it, the, the name is, it's all about the nose. Uh, so I wonder what platyrine, but see, that's nose too. So platyrine must be a different kind of nose. Ooh, okay, we're, we're figuring this out. Um, do all of the monkeys and higher apes also have 32 teeth? I don't know. Um, and then this tail thing, uh, prehensile, means that they can use it as like an, uh, an arm, a leg, a, a, a thing to grasp onto branches. But we don't, we don't have those kind of tails. Uh, I think that is good for that. Um, trying to think how this is connected to the last one, if it is at all, but might not be. Moving on to catastrophe. This is a noun from 1540. One, the final event of the dramatic action, especially of a tragedy. Two, a momentous tragic event ranging from extreme misfortune to utter overthrow or ruin. 3A, a violent and sudden change in a feature of the earth. Mm, yeah, that, okay. Uh, 3B, a violent, usually destructive natural event as a supernova. Well, for the, the place around the supernova, yes, that is a very destructive. Uh, but, you know, most of us who are very far away from the supernova... Uh, it's not so destructive to us. Although, I guess if it's close enough, it could send some something something our way that might do something. I don't know. Uh, number four, utter failure. Synonym is fiasco, as in the party was a catastrophe. It was a catastra party. No, that didn't work. Catastrophic is an adjective, and catastrophically is an adverb. This is from the Greek. Whoa, could you guess that? Catastrephine, which means to overturn, plus, uh, which is from uh, kata plus strephine, which means to turn. Uh, so turn, uh, yeah, everything just got overturned when this catastrophe happened. It messed it all up. Next is catastrophe theory, noun from 1971. Mathematical theory and conjecture that uses topology to explain events characterized by major abrupt changes and those events would be as an earthquake or a stock market crash uh, the, the the smart math people know know what they're doing there uh topology is um it's well you know we when you think of topology on a map it's the it's the uh, the low parts and the high parts the mountains and the valleys uh and then i guess you know the stock market would have a topology too i don't know what that would be because i'm not smart enough but it has a topology we will learn about topology later. Next, we have catastrophism, noun from 1869, a geological doctrine that changes in the Earth's crust that changes in the Earth's crust have in the past been brought about suddenly by physical forces operating in ways that cannot be observed today. Compare to uniformitarianism. Whoa, uniformitarianism. Uh. Okay, I, I have to read this again, I think. A geological doctrine that changes in the Earth's crust have in the past been brought about suddenly by physical forces operating in ways that cannot be observed today. So something happened in the past, and we're studying that. Uh, and a catastrophist, yeah, people who are studying the catastrophes of the past. Uh, that is a noun. Uh, next, we have catatonia, noun from circa 1891 catatonic schizophrenia so they combined catatonic and schizophrenia and got catatonia uh so that would be somebody i guess who suffers from schizophrenia maybe suffers from is not the proper term somebody who has schizophrenia who is also catatonic which is actually our last word um but uh yeah i think that is it for that one so moving on to catatonic it is our last word c-a-t-a-t-o-n-i-c -A -A adjective from 1904 of, no, number one, of relating to being, resembling, or affected by schizophrenia, characterized especially by a marked psychomotor disturbance that may involve stupor or mutism, negativism, rigidity, purposeless excitement, and inappropriate or bizarre posturing. I have a feeling that a lot of this is not... Uh, up to date, but I am not an expert in this stuff, so I don't know. Uh, 
Yeah, and then we have number two, characterized by a marked lack of movement, activity, or expression. I think that's the one that most of us think of when we think of catatonic. Uh, catatonic is also a noun, and catatonically is an adverb. And of course, I think there's a, not that this is a thing that sh- should be joked about, but there's a, a gin and tonic joke in there, or maybe a, a catatonic could be a drink name with tonic and what would be a cata thing? I don't know. The first thing I thought of was carrot juice, but there's no there's no R. It's not carrot. Anyway, this was a terrible episode. Uh, man, I didn't sing anything. Uh, when I listen back to these episodes, getting them ready to post, uh, I I always th- I hear things differently than in the moment right now. Uh, and so I thought, oh, well, why didn't I think of that? Why didn't I see it that way? Why didn't I think of that joke? Why didn't I think of this song that would have been so appropriate there. So I, I miss those. I'll, I'll try and be better. Um, but I have to pick a word of the episode because we, so we had cataplasm, cataplexy, uh, catapult, cataract, catar, catarine, catastrophe, catastrophe theory, cat, catastrophism, catatonia, and catatonic. Well, I got to say, uh, these, this actually, uh, this episode, even though I was bad, the words were fascinating. I think that this was a really interesting group of words. Uh, a lot of differences, uh, a lot of Greek uh, etymology, uh, yeah, just some really interesting concepts. So it's kind of hard to pick one, uh, but I think I am going to pick cataplexy, C A T A P L E X Y, as the word of the episode because that was just an interesting thing. Loss of muscle powers following a strong emotional stimulus. What what would that be? How would that happen? I just think that's an interesting concept. So, um, cataplexy song? I hope I never have to be... No, that's not it. I hope I never have to suffer from cataplexy, because that would be terrible. All right, yeah, these songs have no melody. It's very bad. Maybe we'll get better someday. Okay, uh, though I have to quickly say the holidays. I already mentioned it's Pi Day, um, and it is also click click click. It is still Lent. Uh, Constitution Day in Andorra, uh, Heroes Day in Estonia. It is Mother Tongue Day in uh, Sikhism. Sikhism. It is Nanakshani or Nanakshahi New Year. Uh, in Albania, it is Summer Day, and in Japan and other Asian nations, it is White Day, on which men give gifts to women. Oh, it's complimentary to Valentine's Day. I don't know why they call it White Day. Uh, let's see, anything else? Uh, oh, Daylight Savings Time begins. Come on, are we really still doing this? Um, it is the NAACP Image Awards, uh, so that's cool. I like no. Oh, it's also the Screen Actors Guild Awards. And, ooh, my stomach is going because I'm hungry. In the UK, it is Mothering Sunday. Uh, Let's see. I think we got that. In Germany, it is Equal Pay Day. So that's good. Everybody's got to be equal paid. And that is good for that. Thank you very much for listening. And until next time. Oh, tomorrow there will be a guest. I already recorded it. So look forward to that. Thank you very much for listening. And until next time, this is Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, Word Nerds. Welcome to another episode of The Dictionary. This is my podcast where we talk about all the stuff. Uh, This is a very, very special episode. I, you know, I don't have these too, too often, but every once in a while we have a guest. Uh, So as you probably saw in the title, uh, we have Vince Clemente. Vince is, um, he is a filmmaker. I think he's uh, lots of other things too, but um, he is here because he is uh, promoting his new documentary called, well, I like to pronounce it, The Palindromists. Um, But Vince, can you go ahead and just tell the people a little bit more about who you are, what you do, and uh, what this uh, film, what this documentary is? Sure. Yeah. My name is Vince Clemente, as uh, you've said. And uh, yeah, I've uh, directed this new film called The Palindromists, or the palindromists which is uh, a film following the uh, best writers of palindromes in the world as they um, prepare to compete in the uh, world championship so it stars will shorts weird al yankovic danica mckellar and then uh, a whole bunch of uh palindromists palindromists whatever you want to call it you know (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah, I know that's one of the uh, the big debates is how do you pronounce this word? What, what's your preference? Uh, you know, I tend to bounce back and forth uh, depending on what mood I'm in, you know. Uh, you know, palindromist sounds like more of like a, a formal, exciting term, you know, like palindromist just sounds kind of just like a clunky, messy word. But I mean, the word is palindrome. You don't say palindrome, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, short says it's palindromist, but, uh, the dictionary uh, as maybe once you get to it, it'll say palindromist, <laughs> I believe. Yeah, I, I could probably uh, check that real quick. Um, <laughs> yeah, I uh, th- as I've learned while reading through this book that depending on the f- uh, certain form of the word, um, y- you have to change the emphasis of where the si- the syllable you know the the dif- you have to change the emphasis on different syllables and it gets very confusing sometimes. Um, so yes, palindromists is definitely the more proper way to say it. Maybe sounds a little fancier. Um, but, but also it doesn't sound like the word palindrome. Um, yeah. So I, I, I should say that I first learned about, uh, Vince and his documentary from the, uh, from Dave and Ethan's 2000 inch weird, weird Al podcast. Um, and I actually had both of them on as guests on this show. Uh, and so if anybody has not heard those and you like weird Al and you like those guys, go check those out. But yeah, I, I heard about this, and I uh, they said that it was playing at the San Francisco uh, Documentary Film Festival, uh, which you could do online, you know, since everything's online now uh, d- during a pandemic. And so I went ahead, and I watched it, and I loved it. And I reached out to Vince, and he uh, very graciously agreed to be a guest on here. Um, and you know, that the, the movie is all about words, uh, and my podcast is all about words, so I thought that they would be a good mix. Um, you know, and I looked through the, this section of where we're at. We're in you know early mid March, and uh, there were no palindrome words, so we sort of picked a, a semi random section of the page that had some good words. And uh, you know, I don't know if palindromes are gonna sneak their way into this episode at all, but <laughs> you know, they're there in spirit, in the back of my mind, and uh, probably your mind too. Oh, totally. They're always in the the back of my mind, you know. And- it's like one of those things you kind of uh, you follow all these people that do palindromes and uh, you kind of get the bug, you know. And I'm sure after you see the movie, you'll start, you know, reading words backwards and trying it out yourself. Uh, for me, it was something that I didn't know it was even possible to uh, write your own palindrome. I didn't know it was available. I just thought that was just some kind of word play that uh, or, you know, something like onomatopoeia that was just existed and that was it, you know. So, uh but what you want to look for in a good palindrome word, uh, what what the greats say, is you want uh, words that are you know nice for palindromes are words that have you know uh, alternating vowels and consonants. Mm. So, yeah, I uh, after I watched the documentary, I actually started to try and write my own, uh, and it you know I I made some good progress. It was getting pretty pretty complicated. Um, I don't know if I will ever go back to it or if I can even find where I started writing it. Uh, but yeah, it's, uh, (laughs) that is not an easy thing to do. So I am really, really impressed with, uh, you know, the people who are featured in your documentary. I'm really impressed with, uh, what they're able to come up with and, um, you know, in, in relatively short time. Um, have you actually ever made your own? I have. I've made uh, I've made a couple here and there. I was trying to avoid uh, avoid the bug because I didn't want to, you know, become obsessed with it. Because uh, I made a different movie about you know, the video game Tetris, and uh, I still run the world championship. So um, I didn't I didn't know if I wanted palindromes to be around. You know, I wanted to move on to the next project or something. Uh, but uh, yeah, so I I actually enjoy writing it. You know, there's nights I just sit there and you know play around in the dictionary or flip words around. But uh, the one I'm most proud of is God to help mass sample hot dog. <laughs> and I, I just think that's a funny image. And uh, that's what seems to make good palindromes is, uh, or ones that, you know, get toted around town like champions, you know, that they're uh, kind of funny in a way. Yeah. When you can bring humor into it, that brings it really to another level and, and it, you know, it makes it even more impressive, I think, mm-hmm. other than just throwing some random words together. Um, well, I thought I had, oh, uh, yeah, we should mention, uh, you, you, you alluded to it, um, that you run the Tetris World Championship? I do. This is uh, the 12th year now. Um, we, uh, the classic Tetris World Championship, 
and it's a yearly event and uh, we have events throughout the world and there's you know a big online community now and everyone should uh, check it out uh, just the old nes tetris uh, oh my god that's live it living its life 30 years later <laughs> yeah yeah we uh i think we're probably semi close in age yeah I, I grew up in the 80s and boy tetris that that took up a lot of my time I, I was never a championship level but you know i got i got pretty far it was it was fun well it's cool now um a couple of years ago this uh young young man joseph saley 16 years old came out and he just started you know just taking it over the scene and, and crushing all the old previous records that had long stood the test of time and now there's this whole you know young brigade of of of, of players that are just unstoppable so that's crazy it's really cool to watch yeah yeah um and you also do sometimes uh play tetris on twitch I do, yeah. I, uh, I've been playing on Twitch. Uh, you can check me out, hang out with me. Uh, classic Vomps, V O M C E. Um, you know, dot, dot, Twitch dot classic Vomps dot TV. Nice. And of course, I'll put all your links in the episode notes. So if any of you want to check out that stuff, definitely do it. And I highly recommend checking out the Palindromists, which um, is uh, now available. I think it was uh, March 9th, you said, now available on uh, multiple streaming platforms. Yeah, we're on uh, iTunes, uh, Amazon Prime, and then a whole bunch of other uh, platforms. So, yeah. Sweet. All right. Well, we uh, should probably talk about the words. That is what the people are here to hear about. People are here to hear about? Is that the right sentence? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Hello, so- people that listen. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, there, you know, there's a few of them. There's a few of, a few of them out there. All right. All right. Um, all well, right hello so- to each and one of you. <laughs> yes. We. I love them all. I can probably... If if uh, if I were able to meet them, I would give them each a handshake. Although I'm not handshaking anymore, I'm done with that. Yeah, you got to take a little time off from the handshakes for a little while. Yeah, I think I'm good with fist bumps. <laughs> All right. So our first word is Catawba, capital C A T A W B A. This is a noun from 1715. Number one uh, would be plural. Oh, the plural could be Catawba. Or you could add an S at the end. Either one is okay. Uh, So this is a member of an American Indian people of North Carolina and South Carolina. Number two, the language of the Catawba people. Three, any of various wines produced from a pale red Native American grape. I I wonder if the wine is made in that region or if there's some connection to the american indian people like maybe they made this wine um let's see this is it says probably ultimately from uh the spanish spelling catawba uh which has no w and has a p catapa um or cataba which is the name of the 16th century uh, catawba town hmm. all right so do you know much about uh, these people anything about these people uh zero yeah. uh but i do i do like that i kind of imagine you know the the north catabas versus the south catabas <laughs> and i i really want to know what's going on there you know like is there a battle over like the the grape field in the middle of the town or something you know <laughs> yeah that'd be great if there was uh north carolina and south carolina were divided because of the north catawba and the south catawba south catawba i don't even know how to talk today um, yeah, I've, I've definitely heard the word, but I'm not familiar with them because I'm not familiar with a lot of things. But uh, yeah, I mean, for those people, um, you know, there's a lot of us out there who are not familiar with a lot of these indigenous people a- across the country. And we are all living on what used to be their land. Uh, you know, for mm-hmm. your for you, North Carolina and South Carolina people, this is a group of people that used to live where you live. And now I'm curious about uh, this Catawba wine. Yeah, it's nice that they sneak that in there. They're like, all right, these are the people, but there's also a wine, you know? <laughs> yeah, to, to make the winos happy. No, that was a terrible yeah, yeah. thing to say. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, we are moving on to the cat bird. It's one word. It's a cat and a bird. The bird is the word. <laughs> this is a noun from 1709. An American songbird that is dark gray in color with a black cap and reddish coverts under the tail and is related to the mockingbird and the scientific name is dumatella carolinensis 
I love reading those scientific names. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, I, I, yeah, I, I never realized that there was a an actual bird named Cat Bird. Did Did you know about this? I had no idea, and I just like that uh, you know, like com- combining two animals into one animal. Uh, I just imagine a flying cat, which sounds terrifying to me. Uh. <laughs> Yeah, it's like a catfish, but it's a cat bird. It would be great if it had those little like antennas sticking out of its face too. Oh man, yeah. Yeah, totally. I, uh, I, 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 I enjoy birds. I enjoy animals very much, but I, I never got into bird watching or anything like that. Um, but uh, I know that that's a a really big thing. That's been uh, people have been really getting into uh, birding now that it's called. Um, and so uh, I don't know. I think it would be cool, but also I feel like. Maybe my personality, it maybe it doesn't fit with my personality. I don't know. Would you ever go birding? Uh, maybe once, and then uh, I'll see if you know. I'd have to get a, a nice pair of binoculars or something. Yeah. Uh, but I do like seeing a bird every once in a while. That you know, like you all, every once in a while, you see like the most beautiful bird just sitting there, and uh, you, you know, you just stare at it until it flies away, or you know. Yeah, uh, yeah, I, I like it. Um, I like uh, listening to the songs and trying to think what what is the purpose of this song right now? Is it is it to to communicate or what's the wh- why are they communicating? Is it to try and get a mate? Is it to talk to your friends? Is it to find where food is or is it to tell people where food is? Uh, I don't know. I find that fascinating, but I've never actually like sat down and really tried to figure it out. I think a lot of it goes. Uh, a lot of it is uh, searching for a mate, maybe. You know, yeah, a lot of that, uh, you know, look how beautiful I can sing. And <laughs> yeah, um, but I mean, it, they're comparing it to the mockingbird. So I wonder if it's like kind of an annoying bird mm. um. <laughs> or, or is able to uh, to match songs of some kind. I don't know. Interesting. Yeah. All right. Well, we are going to move on to cat bird seat. Uh, yeah. Like the seat, like your chair seat. Uh, two words. Noun from 1942. So interesting. Okay. A position of great prominence or advantage, the catbird seat. So I wonder if that's related at all to the actual bird, the catbird. Well, I wonder, yeah, me too. I mean, 1942, that's probably Mm what, you know, some kind of, isn't there a world war going on at that time? Something like that. I've heard stories. Uh, So, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Long ago in the forgotten history of the world, you know, before the great uh, deletion of history (laughs) yeah uh uh, yeah i wonder if it came out of the war like it was uh, some kind of cat bird nation you know like a south carolina (laughs) we're not in south carolina anymore (laughs) Uh, no we're probably in europe yeah i wonder where the cat bird's from so interesting it says it's an american songbird but yeah yeah i don't know there's a there's a website um etim online where they get a lot more um uh, information they go in more depth into the etymology of words so i wonder if they happen to have this this information in there but um y- you know whether or not uh, it came from the cat bird although i assume it did it's just a position of great prominence or advantage so if you have yeah. a one of those you can say i've got the cat bird seat i kind of like that word a lot and uh you know i never heard of it and yeah i'm gonna, I'm gonna sneak it in somewhere and no one's gonna know what i'm talking about so I love it. Yeah. I've come across a lot of those words in here. And of course, I promptly forget them all. But it's like, oh, we got to we got to bring these back into our our vernacular. Well, I was looking through this uh, last night and uh, my girlfriend told me that there was a bar. I forget where she said it was, but it's named the Catbird Seat. Mm. Uh, so Interesting. I guess it's uh, a, a bar of great prominence. <laughs> or they think they have great prominence. <laughs> yeah, I guess yeah. so. Uh, very nice. Yeah, I'll have to see if I can find where that is. Um, we are going to move on to our next word. It is cat boat, which is all one word. So maybe they use a cat boat to find cat birds and cat fishes. I don't know. Uh, this is a <laughs> noun from 1860. A sailboat having a cat rig and usually a centerboard and being of light draft and broad beam. Um, are you familiar with boats at all? Um, no, zero. Yeah. Me, me neither. <laughs> I don't know anything today. Uh, no, I'm, and I don't. That's why I'm doing this, because I, I know nothing. Um, so a, a cat rig, I don't know if that's related to a uh, catamaran. We had that recently, um, mm-hmm. but I, I, I'm not sure. So, um, you know, if you're a boat person, you know what that is. But uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know what a cat rig is, but I don't think it has anything to do with felines. 
Well, it's from 1860, so I'm guessing it's some kind of classic, you know, boat. But could you imagine a boat made out of cats? You know, like I don't like cats don't really like water, so I don't know. Maybe it's all the cats got together and decided to make a boat. <laughs> Yeah, now I'm imagining a boat made out of cats. <laughs> uh, that's a great sight. Uh, that I I don't know. I can't even imagine. It, like, how are they? Yeah, that would not work because you're right. They hate they hate water. Although recently, um, my cat has taken to jumping up on our dining room table, and so I started using the uh, the spray bottle technique to get her to go off, and it <laughs> it doesn't really work. She I think she's just like, oh, good water. I'll jump off and I'll lick the water, but then I'm just going to jump back on so I can get more water. So that uh, has completely failed. Sounds like you have a, a boat-worthy cat. Yeah, maybe I should uh, throw her in the shower and see how she likes that and then take her into, <laughs> take her to the Lake Michigan. There you go. Uh, all right, next we have Cat Briere. I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, C-A-T-B-R-I-E-R, Cat Briere, noun from 1839. Any of a genus of dioecious often prickly climbing pa- plants not pants climbing although i want some climbing pants now uh climbing <laughs> plants of the lily family and the genus name is this is kind of a cool one smilax or smilax i don't know how to pronounce that word but that is cool s m i l a x a cat briere is a uh, also what is this word dioecious d i o e c i o u s <laughs> Uh, it is a climbing plant, so maybe it's like a, a vine of some kind. Maybe I'll post a picture on social media. Yeah. yeah I'm guessing are you, you're maybe not a plant guy either. <laughs> no, no, apparently I like nothing. <laughs> I mean, neither. I mean, I'm guessing dioecious is some kind of uh, thing like deciduous trees. Um, yes. So maybe it, it dies during the winter or something. Yeah, some something like that. I I don't know. It's I can't really figure out. Although the only thing I can figure out is the the prefix die d i. I think means two. So you know, like mm-hmm. morning and night. Maybe maybe it like maybe the maybe there's flowers and the flowers go to sleep at night. I don't know something like that. But uh, yeah, I have no idea what that means. Maybe it blooms twice a year. Or yeah, something, something like that. But. Or, I, or maybe they just misspelled delicious. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's a very delicious uh, prickly. Well, the word, yeah, the word prickly is in there. So maybe, well, no, that's, I, I was thinking pickles, but <laughs> no. Um, yeah, well, it, when we get to the Ds, we can learn all about dioecious or something. Uh, well, the next word is uh, much easier for my brain to comprehend. It is cat burglar. Two words, noun from 1907. A burglar who is adept at entering and leaving the burglarized place without attracting notice. Um, and I guess in, you know, the early 1900s, they thought that, oh, if you could leave, uh, enter and leave without anybody noticing, you're quiet like a cat. So I, I, I'm i guessing that's where the name came from. Oh, totally. It's got to be that. Um, I mean, those cats are sneaky, you know. Yeah, I can't tell you how many times I'll just turn around and there will be like a cat at my feet. I'm like, where, where, how... Where did you come from? You're so dang quiet. Or you play the game where you like hide around a corner and like oh. keep popping out and it gets closer and closer to you. Oh yes, I have I've done that many times. <laughs> it reminds me of like the, the 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 Pink Panther. He he was a cat burglar, right? Uh okay. Of sorts. So I'm trying to remember. Uh, I know that the main character I think was a detective, but I don't know if he was yeah. the Pink Panther. Or he was, I don't think he was. I think he was, oh, you know what? Maybe it was a gem. Maybe there was like a Pink Panther gem or something. I don't remember, yeah. Yeah, I can't remember. I, um, I, I just see see him like sneaking around, listening to that uh, <laughs> that great ditty. Da-doom, you know? da-doom, <laughs> da-doom, 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 da-doom. I, uh, I learned how to play that on the piano when I was a kid. That was, that was fun. You got to bring it back to close the episode out, you know? Yeah, well, okay, so this is something you may not be aware of, but I'm supposed to sing in every episode. I have given myself this rule. So I just sang, and we can call that... You know, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll sing it again at the end. We'll see. We'll see how I feel. Maybe <laughs> I'll make you sing it, actually. All right, yeah, and you didn't even pay me to, uh, you know, segue that one for you. <laughs> there, there are, there's no money being exchanged here, but uh, we, we can say that, yeah. Um, okay, next we have Cat Call, one word... Noun from 1693. One, a loud or raucous cry made especially to express disapproval as 
at a sports event. And number two, I think this one would be maybe a little bit more common, a derisive remark. Synonym is criticism. And cat call is also a verb. Um, and, I, you know, I, I think that maybe in my mind, the thing that comes, uh, that I think of more often would be uh, something that's not in here, which is typically, and this is not a good phrase, um, typically right. a man cat calling a woman. Uh, what do you, <laughs> yeah, something like that. <laughs> Um, but you know, I guess, uh, I guess there are cat calls at sports events. I don't know. Honestly, I I feel like both of these definitions are not, uh, as common as, as the one that I mentioned. Yeah. You got to start over. This dictionary is wrong. Um, start from the beginning again. Yep. Uh, Yep. Let's get a new one. It's (laughs) specifically at a sports event. Um, so you can't do it anywhere else. Uh-huh. Right. Well, and yeah, the, in parentheses there, uh, as at a sports event, they those are typically like the most common example. Um, like but a boo. Like yeah, a straight boo. <laughs> I guess. I guess I wouldn't call that a cat call though. That seems odd. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, they call that heckling. Yes. Where I'm from. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, all right. Well, we are going to move on to our very last word of the episode, um, which is a long one, and um, I actually decided that we're going to read... It goes over to the next column quite a ways, so I decided we're just going to do it all. Um, uh, I'm yeah. excited for this one. <laughs> I didn't know that uh, the word you're about to announce has uh, got so many different ways of use. Yeah, so there's there's a bunch of definitions. There's, I think, intransitive verb and, and, and transitive verb and phrases and synonyms. Um, so let's get into it. Uh, the word is catch, C-A-T-C-H. Yeah, this is the first form. The second form will be in the next episode, but it won't be nearly as long. All so right. So catch, you, you don't want to, like, it's a terrible word for palindromes. That T-C-H at the end is oh. just uh, stop you right in your tracks. Well, and not even uh, so much the T, it's more of the C-H, because when you flip that, it becomes an H-C, and that's like, how do you, but yeah, then the T makes it a 10 times worse. Well, with the H and the C, you could cut them into two separate words, like sure. a beginning and end of a word. Uh, with the T-C-H, you're just, you're just kind of... You're pretty screwed. Left, left out there hanging. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I hope nobody tries to make a palindrome out, out of catch. Um, yeah, that's a dead end, or you'll win a Pulitzer Prize. You know? Yeah, if you can figure out a way to do that, uh, I am impressed. I am impressed. Uh, more impressed than I would be just creating a palindrome in the first place. Um, by the way, I should also say that, um, you know, I, I, Vince, I think I mentioned this to you and I've, I've mentioned this in a few episodes in the past. I, I really like backwards talking. Uh, I actually like backwards stuff just in general, just weird oh, yeah. things and backwards things. And so um, when I was younger, I got into backwards talking and I, uh, you know, in a few of these episodes, I've actually said a word I've on the spot figured out how to say a word backwards and uh, my friend and I actually figured out a few backwards palindromes backwards speaking palindromes Um, like one of them is Rob eat a nutty bar so then when you flip the audio it has nothing to do with the spelling when you flip the audio it sort of mostly sounds like Rob eat a nutty bar again Rob eat a nutty bar so I, I don't know I just I wanted to mention that in this episode because we're talking about palindromes, but uh, you know that 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 takes it to a whole other level. It's not spelling; it's you have to deal with sound and phonetics, and uh, you know that axis is uh, a whole other part of your brain, which is I can't really do <laughs> myself, but I can do the backwards talking fairly fairly well. Yeah, that sounds like uh, you know a lot of the early palindromes were uh, used for spells. Uh, and, and witchcraft because it was uh, amazing that the word was forward and backwards. So right. a lot of the things, uh, there's some great stories about the golem that, uh, and like Frankenstein stories that in order to, you know, kill Frankenstein or the golem, you had to like write the name on his forehead backwards or something. Mm. <laughs> yeah, uh, it, it's kind of amazing how as a species we've gotten smarter and we realize well not only is there really no witchcraft but that. Yeah, they're just words you know they don't they don't they don't do things like that <laughs> well no, i don't know no spoilers <laughs> not yet not yet we don't know um all right so let's see so we have this word catch it is a verb from the 13th century so we are going to have a lot of definitions we are starting with transitive 1a to capture or see or seize especially after pursuit as in 
catch a thief. 1B, to take or entangle in or as if in a snare, as in catch fish in a net. Maybe they can be catfish, so you can catch catfish from a <laughs> cat boat. On your cat boat, yeah. Uh, 1C, oh, go ahead. From the catbird seat, that's all I was going to say. <laughs> yes, there's a catbird seat on the cat boat catching catfish, catching catfish. There we go. Okay. 1C, <laughs> the synonym is deceive. 1D, to discover unexpectedly, synonym is find, as in caught in the act. That would be the past form, caught. Uh, 1E, to check suddenly or momentarily. And then the example of what you are checking, you are checking oneself or yourself. So you can check yourself. Check yourself <laughs> before you wreck yourself. Exactly. That's right. <laughs> uh, check suddenly or momentary. Oh, suddenly I have to check myself or catch. Sorry. Oh, no, it does say check. Yes. Okay. But I'm, I'm mixing up words all, all over the place. Where were we? We're at 1F. To become suddenly aware of, as in caught me looking at him Ooh, why were you looking at him you got caught got busted <laughs> yep uh okay 2a to take hold of synonym is seize 2b to affect suddenly 2c to grasp and hold on to uh the example is something in motion so uh as in catch a fly ball you are grasping and you are holding on to it and it was in motion. 2D, man, this is such a big block of text. It's like my brain and my eyes don't know what to do with this. Okay, 2D. You already lost me. <laughs> yeah, well, no, you don't have to follow along. Don't worry about that. Uh, okay, 2D, to avail oneself of. Synonym is take, as in caught the first opportunity to leave. 2E, to obtain through effort. Synonym is get, G-E-T, as in catch a ride. Uh, 2F, to overtake unexpectedly. This is usually used in the passive, as in was caught in a storm. 2G, to get entangled, as in catch a sleeve on a nail. Oh, yeah, that sucks. And I know we have a little bit of an audio delay here, but, uh, you know, if you ever want to throw in something, just interrupt me and I'll stop talking. Oh, yeah. I'll catch you uh, when I need to. Got it. Uh, let's see. Number three, to become affected by as 3A, synonym is contract or contract. No, it would be contract because the example is catch a cold. Oh, mm -hmm. that sucks. Uh, That's three. a bad, bad one now. You don't want to catch any of this stuff going around. Right? No, you do <laughs> not. Um, luckily, I have not caught anything, and I hope I never do. Um, yeah, same here. By the way, I learned that um, since we are both in media, we can mm -hmm. theoretically get the vaccine a bit earlier than the general public. Um, oh, really? Yes. That's just, you, you just I have find to, that kind of ridiculous, to be honest, that they allow media, you know? Yeah. But I, I guess it makes sense for, like, uh, news reporters or whatever. Right. News reporters but, or camera people, audio people who have to go out in the field often, because mm -hmm. uh, I do still have to sometimes, you know, go go to a location to shoot something for my job. Sure. Um, and so, yeah, that's, I think, their reasoning. Um, where were we? Oh, boy. I, I moved my finger and I lost my place. Here we go. 3B. To respond sympathetically to the point of being imbued with, as in catch the spirit of an occasion. That's a weird example. Yeah, that's my favorite one so far. <laughs> catch the spirit of an occasion or uh, just yeah. to respond sympathetically. Is that right? Sympathetically to the point of being imbued with. All right. Yes. I love catching the spirit. You're you're crying because you just you know you just caught the feelies you know. <laughs> yes. I love it. Oh oh how I love to catch the feelies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, three C, to be struck by, uh, as in he caught a bullet in the leg. <laughs> well, I would say that's a bit more than being struck by. <laughs> yeah, you are, You've been shot. I I thought this was a you know like a family friendly show. I mean, right now we're now, now we're shooting people in the leg. Yeah, I uh, uh. I actually uh, met somebody 
this is probably just weeks before the pandemic started, um, but I was coming home uh, on a flight and I sat next to, oh, I had a foot injury, so I had crutches and stuff, and I sat next to a guy and he was like, oh, I'm familiar with that because um, I got shot in the leg. What? <laughs> he, he, somebody, a few, a few guys tried to steal his car and they ended up shooting him and then running away and they didn't even steal his car and so he, like, his, his bone was... <laughs> shattered and oh man that was a crazy story <laughs> let me tell you a story about my leg pain <laughs> yeah right i was like mine pales in comparison to that i mean you're not supposed to catch bullets with your leg come on N- no you you got no hands to do it <laughs> yeah use your hands <laughs> much much safe no kids <laughs> don't try and catch bullets with your hands or uh, legs you know. or legs right or any other part of your body Let's not catch bullets at all. No, yeah. unless you were a Penn and Teller, you're trained professionals. Yeah, they're not. He's not even catching it. I don't think. No, yeah. no. I not think really. there's there's something. There's like a mirror or something. Or Something's some going on. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, three D to be subject subjected to synonym is receive, as in catch hell. Oh, he's gonna catch hell for that. Yeah. <laughs> for a to take in and retain as in a barrel to catch rainwater maybe someday i will live uh off the grid and i will need a barrel <laughs> yeah. to catch rainwater because I, th- I think i'm done with society at this point i'm a little scared to use the word catch anymore because I, I don't know what people are you know think i'm referring to you know well yeah with these like 40 million definitions yeah. you have no clue yeah this is yeah I'm, i don't know I'm going to remove it from my catalog. <laughs> yeah, good luck. Uh, yeah, th- this is why English is hard. Uh, okay, for B, synonym is fasten. Five, to take or get usually momentarily or quickly, as in catch a glimpse of a friend. Also as in catch a nap. Ooh, that sounds really great right about now. Are oh, you, yeah. Are you a napper? Oh, definitely. In uh, in high school, they called me the big napper. So <laughs> that was a little n- nickname I had for a while. That's. Uh... I can't tell if you're joking or not. No, no, for real. It's oh. been retired. There was uh, me and another friend of mine. We were the nappers. Uh, oh, that's awesome. So I was big napper, and he was also a big napper. So we just call each other the same name. <laughs> oh, I was gonna say, was, like, was he little napper or something? <laughs> no, no, both big nappers. Big nappers. Yeah, just, like, ha- I, I was. <laughs> I was never really a, a napper. I don't know. I mean, obviously, when I was a, a baby or kid, I was. But uh, yeah, I never, I, I never got into that. And uh, I, I think it's a really great idea. And I think that we should bring it in as a society, like uh, like Spain does. I think we need naps in the middle of the day. Yeah. Well, once we start it up, everyone's gonna catch nap fever. <laughs> catch the nap fever. Yes, exactly. Let's catch the nap fever. 2021 it's better than catching a cold yeah or a bullet yeah yep yep well way better than a bullet um okay (laughs) next we have 6a the synonym is just overtake as in catch the leader in a race i i will never do that i will never be the leader in a race either i don't think unless i'm racing five-year-olds i mean maybe you could play some mario kart or something i don't know Oh, uh, well, yes, I have done that. I have caught the leader in a race of Mario See? Kart. That is true. You See? got me. Don't don't count yourself out. Yeah, I caught you. Yeah, <laughs> You did. Oh, boy. Yeah, that word's really gets used <laughs> a lot. I'm just going to keep saying it. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, <laughs> you catch me off guard. Uh, okay, 6B. To get aboard in time, as in catch the bus. Oh man, I have I have such memories of running to catch the train, and often or sometimes missing it. Oh, when uh, the door when the door closes on you, yeah, <laughs> and then the everyone worst. on the everyone on the train gives you that look, right? Uh, <laughs> like half of them are sorry, and half of them think it's kind of funny. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> and if I were in their p- place, I would be thinking the same thing, kind of laughing, but yeah. kind of like, oh, sorry, <laughs> your your problem for missing it. <laughs> Uh, all right, number seven, to attract and hold. Uh, synonyms are arrest and engage, as in caught my attention, also as in caught her eye. Number eight, to make contact with. Uh, synonym is strike, as in the pitch caught him in the back, and then he got to go to first base. This dictionary is brutal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, the, there are sometimes very odd examples 
um, uh, yeah, I don't <laughs> quite understand it. And sometimes they don't help me understand the word any better. But yeah, it is what it is, I guess. I feel like that's the same as the bullet one. Like, you know, they're just doing it twice now. Yeah, getting smacked with in the. I mean, I would much rather get hit in the back yeah. with a baseball than a uh, shot in the leg <laughs> with a bullet. Right, right. Nine uh, A to grasp by the senses. Am I reading this correctly? To grasp by the senses or the mind, as in, you catch what I mean. That's a question mark. You qu- you catch what I mean. Mm-hmm. Also, as in, didn't ca- catch the name. I didn't get it. I didn't catch it. Come again? Right? <laughs> I, man, I, I am so bad with names. I, I feel like in my... I've said that many times. I didn't catch your name uh, because I probably wasn't listening or paying attention. So can you tell me again? Yeah. And this time I will pay attention. I mean, it's just too exciting when you meet people, you know. Oh, yeah. You're in the moment. Overload, you know. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, you're caught in the moment. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, 9B, to apprehend and fix by artistic means, as in... Catch a person's likeness. Uh, my dad is a very good artist, so he is very good at uh, qu- even quickly catching a person's likeness. I I can't I can't do that. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's a good definition of catch. Yeah, like that one. Yeah. Ten uh, A synonyms are see, like I see you, and watch, as in catch a game on TV. Oh, did you did you catch the big game on Sunday? Oh, I caught the game. That was a big game. <laughs> I, I did not catch the game on Sunday. Oh, the sports, you know. W- was there a sports game on the television? Um, yeah, I, I knew it was on, but no, I, uh, I, I just I didn't feel like, well, I wasn't going to go to any Super Bowl party, although now I just want to call it the Superb Owl game. <laughs> um, That's pretty but, good. But, uh, you know, it... it it's fun to watch, but I had other stuff to do, and it wasn't. I I didn't care enough. Well, that, that's old news by now. I mean, it's March fifteenth, fifteenth oh, already. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're recording this on a uh, February eleventh. We're we're way ahead of the game, the the big game. All right. Uh, where were we? Ten B says to listen to. Eleven to serve as a catcher for in baseball. I like that they added the for in, to serve as a catcher for in baseball. Yeah, I, I, I'm not liking when they, you know, make it that specific. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm sure there is some grammatical reason that they have to do that, but it, it doesn't uh, it doesn't work with me. Mm. Okay, number 12, to meet with, as in, catch you later. I was actually going to, maybe at the end of the episode, I'll say, catch you later, if I remember. <laughs> okay, so those were, like, go ahead. Check you later, check you later. Right. Who, who's right. the first person to say that? Mm, that is a good question. Maybe when we get to the CHs, they'll they'll tell us. Uh, okay, so those were all of the transitive definitions. Now we have intransitive. Uh, number one, to grasp hastily or try to grasp. Uh, don't worry, there's less of these. Number two, <laughs> to become caught. Three, to catch fire. Also, not not good. Oh, I like the fact that the uh, the word is in the definition, which I always yeah, find yeah. odd. Yeah, you can't do that. What does catch mean? Well, it means to catch fire. Okay, but what does catch mean? Well, it means to catch fire. Okay. Hey, which catch are they referring to at this point? You yeah, know? one of those... Uh, uh, it could be uh, the one that's uh, deceive, to deceive fire. Yes, I have deceived that fire, or the fire <laughs> has deceived me. I don't know. I don't know, yeah. I'm guessing it's that one. I think so. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Number four, to play the position of catcher on a baseball team. Well, duh. And n- number five, the synonym is kick over, as in the engine caught. Okay, I'm not a car guy, but I guess people say that. Are you? Have you heard that? Uh, you know, when you turn the car on, I yeah, guess it catches. I, I, I think I don't know. Yeah, we, we say we say turn over these days. I, yeah, I, yeah. I feel I feel like this is a a little bit more of an older phrase. Uh, you know, when they had to hand crank cars, um, you know, it, it caught something caught. I, I don't know what mm-hmm. exactly is catching, but something kicked over. So now we have some phrases. <laughs> catchable. Oh no, this is not a phrase. This is just catchable. It is the adjective form. Um, and then here's some phrases. Catch a crab. <laughs> that means to fail to raise an oar clear of the water on recovery of a stroke. 
Okay. <laughs> Have you heard this? I feel like I feel like that's an absolute like burn by somebody in a rowboat. You know, uh, what are you trying to catch crabs there, buddy? <laughs> you know, like some, yeah, some some miser is just yelling at you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah some old old experienced yeah. rower. Uh, so yeah. I, so what it says is that when you're in a boat and you don't bring the oar out of the water when you're <laughs> you know going back, you have caught a crab. All right, I want to I want to hear this in use. Yeah, how could you use that in a you know on land? You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we we need to come up with a way that you can. Uh, yeah, I mean, I th- I think using this as an insult is a uh, is a pretty good. I mean, I don't know what it would mean. I don't think it necessarily needs a meaning. But uh, oh boy, you you really caught a crab there, buddy. I feel like it's it should be like crabs are at the bottom, so it should be like if you buried the oar in like the sand or something. You know, you're trying to like stir up a crab. Yeah. Um, why you're missing the water so you're catching crabs that are above the water (laughs) well you you haven't you have failed to raise the oar above the water so it's oh that's right oh okay it's still in the water but i yeah i I mean i don't i are crabs just sitting there right below the surface i don't know i don't think so that's a weird one just bat it batting in order to crab yeah yeah (laughs) uh okay more phrases next is catch dead to find or see at any time, and this is used in strongly negative constructions, as in wouldn't be caught dead in that shirt. <laughs> oh no, definitely uh, not. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I I'm glad that they use this sort of past form, caught dead, because I've never heard anybody say catch dead. Yeah, yeah catch dead. Ca- uh, yeah. Uh, I yeah, you wouldn't catch me dead in that shirt. I yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I guess that would make sense. But yeah, then you got to throw some words in the in the middle there. I mean, but but what, when you're dead, you can't you don't really have choices of what, you know, shirt you're going to wear, so I don't I don't know. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I mean, I guess if You think uh, about it, you could definitely be caught dead in that shirt, you know, any yeah. shirt. Uh, so. <laughs> you I I wouldn't be caught I you you would have to I wouldn't I would wear that shirt. What am I trying to say? Uh, I would have to be dead before I wore that shirt. I, you know, that's sort of yeah. what they're saying. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Catch fire is next. Number one, to become ignited. Number two, to become fired with enthusiasm. Oh, I have. I am so enthusiastic <laughs> about this this page. I have yeah. caught fire. Yeah. I'm about to start dancing. Ooh yeah. Boots, Ooh, boots, baby. Boots, 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 boots. <laughs> uh this this we have fun on this podcast all right number three to increase greatly in scope popularity interest or effectiveness as in this stock uh has not caught fire yet and that is a quote from forbes uh so you know it's uh it hasn't gotten um in scope popularity interest or effectiveness this this very good stock oh uh, what was the uh, GameStop? That that definitely caught fire. Definitely caught fire. And then what was it they did? AMC and then Dogecoin and a bunch of other ones. Yeah. I I, is that still going on? I, I, I haven't checked. Uh, I have no idea. I think you know more than I do. Um, I mean, <laughs> I, I hear a little bit about things going on, but I don't pay super close attention to uh, to the news, not as much as I should. But um, yeah, I mean, GameStop was really the big one. And I, I, I'm actually, I'm glad that it happened because you know it's sort of the uh the ants versus the grasshopper situation there's more (laughs) of the little people than the big people and you know i i think it's good that we can show hey you know we can control this too if if we get enough people who know what they're doing i sure don't but uh yeah that was that was quite a thing that happened yeah, it's just kind of hilarious because at the same time all the game stops are closing and right have 90 percent off sales and i don't know yeah i mean it 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 what what the hedge funds guys did made sense so i mean if i were in that position i would have done the same thing because yeah it's like gamestop is not a stock that you necessarily would want to get yeah. but right. you know uh yeah anyway this is not stock talk this is the dictionary uh so yeah, let's next get back to business back yeah. to business all right next we have catch it uh to incur into to incur blame reprimand or punishment as in he'll really catch it from the boss if he's late again Mm -hmm. um (laughs) are you were you uh were you ever a a late guy or what like what what's your opinion on um being things to things early or on time or late uh you know i like early and on time but uh yeah you know i do have uh i am late every once in a while uh 
you know, if I'm catching a nap or something, I might, you know, <laughs> get <laughs> caught by the boss coming in late. Yep, yeah. going to <laughs> going to catch some fish. Um, yeah, yeah, on my cat boat. <laughs> yep. Uh, yep. Let's see. So our last phrase is catch one's breath. Whew. And this means to rest long enough to restore normal breathing. And then broadly to rest after a period of intense activity. I feel like when I'm done recording these these episodes, I always have to catch my breath because I talk so much. Do you think they put that one at the end here just because... It's a long definition, <laughs> and they're like, "All right, we gotta give yeah, maybe the guy reading it, reading it on a podcast some uh, a little break here, you know." Yes, after all that, <laughs> you need to catch your breath. Um, but we are not done because we have some synonyms. Oh, no. Yay! <laughs> Yay! All right, <laughs> I, I actually really like these sections. You don't see them too often, but uh, I really like them because they give you a lot more information about uh, you know this word and, and other words that are similar. So, catch. Capture, trap, snare, entrap, ensnare, and bag. Wow, that was a that was a lot. Wow. Um, those mean to come to possess or control by or as if by seizing. Catch implies the seizing of something in motion or in flight or in hiding, as in caught the dog as it <laughs> ran by. Okay. Capture <laughs> suggests talking by overcoming resistance or difficulty, as in capture an enemy stronghold. Nice. Trap, snare, entrap, and ensnare. So I just think it's funny that there's there's snare, entrap, trap, snare, entrap, and ensnare. Yeah, yeah. They're all very similar. Um. Anyway, those imply seizing by some device that holds the one caught at the mercy of the captor. Uh, but more specifically, trap and snare apply more commonly to physical seizing, as in trap animals or snared butterflies with a net. But then we have in-trap and in-snare more often are figurative, as in Ah. entrapped the witness with a trick question, also as in a sting operation that ensnared burglars. So yeah, it's a good good trick that when you put the en at the beginning there, uh, um, it's more... What what was the word they use? Figurative and not physical. I like that. I I I don't think I knew that. Yeah, uh, I didn't either. But I just it just sounds like the same word to me with an en. On it, but <laughs> right. now we now we know that it's you know figurative. We got we got so, some I like that. good information there. I learned something today. Oh oh goody! <laughs> My goal is done. <laughs> that actually that that really is a goal of mine is to to learn and have people learn. Um. And then our last uh, word in this synonym section is bag, and that implies shooting down a fleeing or distant prey, as in bagged a brace of pheasants. I guess that is a group of pheasants. Um, all right, so those were all of the words. I will re-say them quickly. Catawba, catbird, catbird seat, catboat, catbriere, cat burglar, cat call, and catch. Um, so you you now get to pick a word of the episode. Which one did you like the best, or that just jumped out at you? Uh, hmm. I'm gonna go with catbird seat. Catbird seat. Uh, I like that. I'm I'm gonna try and work that into my everyday life and see. I'll I'll let you know. I'll keep you informed. Thank of, you. Uh, when I actually use it appropriately. Yeah, I, I'm really curious to know if you're able to do this successfully. And it won't be just talking about the the bar that was mentioned earlier. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. That would be cheating. Yeah. I got to use it as, you know, the noun that it is. Yeah. <laughs> you know? uh, can you now sing a song about the catbird seat, but to the tune of the Pink Panther? <laughs> sure. Let's go. Go for uh, it. <laughs> catbird seat. <laughs> I don't know. Catbird seat. <laughs> That's all I got. I don't know. I'd uh, have to. Uh, I think that was that a different song. I'm trying to think of what that oh. was. That, oh, I think that was. Um, Oh, uh, why am I blanking? Um, Inspector Gadget. I think that was that music. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh man, uh, what well, was close? Uh, this is like a, a slant song. Uh, da dun, 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 da dun. Capersi. That's perfect. That's exactly what I was gonna do. Okay. All right. Oh, All man, right. I can't wait to be in the catbird seat, you know. Yeah. You're I, in the catbird seat right now. I mean, I guess uh, it's my podcast, so yeah, I've got this catbird. I'm sitting on my bed, so uh, my my bed is my catbird seat. 
Um, I'm, I'm jealous. <laughs> you, well, you know what? You you are in the catbird seat when you are, uh, you know, talking about your podcast or no, your uh, your documentary or, uh, mm-hmm. you know, any, any time that people are asking you about it, you are definitely the one in the catbird seat. We, you know, I think we now call this the hot seat, maybe. Maybe maybe that's not the right word, actually. I take that back. Hot seat is not a, a position of great prominence. No, it's the not. Hot seat, hot, the hot seat's old, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's something else. Not good. You don't want to be in the hot seat. No, no. You want to be you want to be in the cat bird seat. <laughs> Very much so. Um, yeah, so thank you for, for being on this. Uh, this was a lot of fun. Um, you know, it's a little bit weird to do these remotely, but uh, we make it work, <laughs> and uh, we talk about some fun words, and we learn something. We are all learning new things like cat bird seat. Um, yeah. So uh, tell the people again what you, what your uh, your documentary is and uh, what you do so they can go find you. Yeah. Hey, guys, uh, if you want, uh, my name is Vince Clemente. I directed a film called The Palindromist. It's now available on iTunes and Amazon Prime and uh, other uh, streaming platforms. Uh, please check it out. Uh, it's, it, it follows the greatest palindromists in the world as they compete in the World Palindrome Championship. Oh, that is so awesome. And it's it's really a fascinating documentary. And I love learning about these people um, who just think in this such an interesting way. Um, and do you have any upcoming projects, anything that you're working on? Uh, right now, I, I uh, spend a lot of my time working on uh, the video game Tetris. Uh, I run the world championship for that. So that's uh, a yearly championship of the video game uh, for the whole entire world. And that's what I work on a lot, and uh, I'm, you know, I got a couple of new projects in mind, but yeah, I haven't really started working on anything yet. Uh, I'll keep you posted. Awesome, awesome, and I will keep my listeners posted when we learn more. Um, cool, so we're ending this episode, which is the Ides of March. If you know anything about that, you know <laughs> what that is. I only know the very small basics, um, and uh, oh, Just oh. Beware. Be, yes, Just you beware have- of today. You have to beware because because Spencer and Vince are going to talk and, you know, who knows where that's going to go. Well, you wouldn't want to catch a knife in the back, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Good one. Good one. <laughs> um, so I, I need to quickly list off some holidays and things that are happening today other than oh. the Ides of March. Uh, let's see. In uh, Let's see. It is World Consumer Rights Day, whatever that is. Uh, we are still in Lent. In Hungary, it is the 1848 Re- Revolution Memorial Day. In Cyprus and Greece, it is Green Monday. I thought that said Greece Monday. No, it's Green Monday. <laughs> uh, in Australia, Harmony Week starts, where everybody is required to sing in harmony all the time. Uh, also in Australia, it is Day of Action Against Bullying and Violence. That is a very, very good thing to celebrate. Mm-hmm. Um, in India, it's also Consumer Rights Day. Let's see. Mexico is Benito Juarez birth date anniversary. In Belarus, it is Constitution Day. In Spain, it is the Fales or La Falas or La Fallas. Uh, what else is it? Um, did we get them all? In Palau, it is Youth Day. And then, of course, I have to say the fun holiday here in the States, and I'm scrolling. It is, oh, my God, really? Are you <laughs> kidding me? <laughs> what? Okay, well, first of all, uh, there's a couple today. First first of all, it's everything you think is wrong day, which <laughs> is brilliant because I think there's a Weird Al song called Everything You Know Is Wrong. Yeah, oh, no, we're tying it yeah. together, yeah. Which, um is actually his style pastiche parody of They Might Be Giants, who is, uh, I'm also a big fan of They Might Be Giants. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see, it says, The unofficial holiday is a gentle reminder that we are all imperfect. It prompts us to accept that there are a lot of things we are wrong about and encourage us to spend some time correcting them. Well, that's cool. I like that. Um, but also, <laughs> it is also napping day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. I like this day. Oh, you my God. the right God. day for me. I had no clue that 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 was uh, that was a good coincidence. I loved it, um, and I love this episode. I love talking to you. This was a lot of fun. Absolutely, I, I love being on the show, and I uh, can't wait to to listen to it again and uh, and tune in more often. Awesome, I appreciate that. Um, you know, it's not for everybody, but if you want to listen, I'm not going to stop you. And I hope that you <laughs> tell everybody. And um, obviously, to all my listeners, thank you for listening. Please go tell everybody about this. You can rate and review and subscribe and all of those fun things. And, um, you know, maybe in the future, 
uh, we will have Vince on again, and maybe uh, we can get some other palindromists on the show. Um, and with that, we are going to end it. Thank you very much for listening. Until next time, this is Spencer Dispensing Information. Catch you later. <laughs> Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. Uh, so yesterday we had a guest. It was a very fun, very long episode. Um, partly it was long because I had a guest, and those are always a lot longer. Um, but also because we we um, we read about half of what was going to be today's episode. Um, I just decided that that made the most sense. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, we really got into it. If you haven't heard it yet, go back and listen. Also, go watch The Palindromists. It is a documentary now available on b- multiple streaming platforms. Uh, and uh, also... Go play some Tetris and go watch Vince play Tetris on Twitch, and maybe you can watch the uh, Tetris World Championship. I think that's cool. Uh, yeah, awesome. All right. Well, so it's going to be a shorter episode today. That's that's wonderful. Maybe I could add another word just to even it out a little bit. Today, by the way, is March 16th. Happy birthday, Sandra. You know who you are. Uh, so let's get into the words. The first word is catch again. But this is the second form. It is a noun from the 15th century. One, something caught, especially the total quantity caught at one time, as in a large catch of fish. 2A, the act, action, or fact of catching. 2B, a game in which a ball is thrown and caught. Oh, yes, let's play catch. The thing that I always, I I sometimes hear people say, let's have a catch. I'm sure that's a very common phrase, but I don't know. I didn't grow up saying that, so I, I just think that phrase is a little bit odd to me. But people say it, and that's cool. I just I just say play catch or let's let's play let's play catch. I guess so. Yeah, maybe that one doesn't make much sense either. But it is a game. Number three, something that checks or holds immovable, as in a safety catch. Four, one worth catching especially as a spouse. What? Okay, you got to catch your spouse, your spouse. All right, man, I just remembered, I think I dreamt last night that I was, I don't know the context, but uh, I was walking past some people and I was talking to somebody else or talking on the phone. And for some reason I said, got to catch them all. And it was, it was a Pokemon joke, even though I don't know anything about Pokemon, but it was a specific reference to something else, and uh, I don't know. I don't know. I just thought that was funny. Uh, yeah, you got to catch them all. You, you got to catch all those spouses. I don't know. That one seems weird to me, but I guess, yeah, I mean, the, the, it's the idea of catching a person seems weird, uh, you know, that, oh, I own you now. That, that doesn't make any sense, but yes, spouses are worth something. They're worth it. Okay. Number five, a round for three or more unaccompanied, usually male voices, often with suggestive or obscene lyrics. Okay, so it's a song. Uh, That's the round, Uh, you know, like row, row, row your boat. And then, you know, then the other person comes in a little bit late. That's a round. Uh, So, yeah, I never, maybe I, I won't post this because we want to make this family friendly. But uh, now I want to look into what this, uh, this catch song is with suggestive or obscene lyrics. Okay. Number six, synonyms are fragment and snatch. Uh, Number seven, a concealed difficulty or complication, as in, there must be a catch. Yes, there must be. Why, why, uh, for, if you don't know what this is, you know, you, somebody says, oh, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go do this for you, or I'm gonna help you out here, and then you're like, well, this is a little bit suspicious. Why would you do that for me? There must be a catch. There must be a reason. There must be something that I got to do for you. There must be something bad that's going to happen to me. What's there? What is the catch? Okay, number eight, a momentary audible break in the voice or breath. Oh, that was a catch right there. Uh, there is no etymology. So we are moving on to catch all. Noun from 1838, something that holds or includes odds and ends or a wide variety of things, as in a catch-all tray. This is one word, by the way. Also as in, dyspepsia is a term, is a catch-all term for stomach discomfort. Dyspepsia. Yes, it is. It is a catch-all term for stomach discomfort. Uh, Next, we have catch as catch can, 
four words with hyphens, adjective from 1764, using any available means or method. Synonym is hit or miss. As in, a catch-as-catch-can system that relies on borrowed judges. That is a quote from Patricia Nealon. Uh, that is sort of a hard phrase to say, catch-as-catch-can, if, if, to say it quickly. Although I just did it, so maybe it's not that hard. Next is catcher. Noun from the 15th century. One that catches, specifically a baseball player positioned behind home plate. Next is catch fly. One word, noun from 1597. Any of various plants uh, of the pink family, often with viscid or viscid stems. And the, uh, the genera, the various plants genera are lichness or lickness. Um, and silene or silene, those are of the pink family, I guess. Uh, I thought that this would be a baseball thing, but it wasn't a catch fly. Next is catching with an ing, adjective from 1590. Uh, number one, synonyms are infectious and contagious. Oh, it is very catching, as in the flu is catching. Uh, unfortunately, the COVID has been catching, and it has caused many, many problems. Um, also is in, his spirit is catching. Ah, so yes, if you are around people and you've you've got a very fun spirit, good energy, uh, maybe you can spread that around. That would be great. But, you know, on the other side, you, you, if, you're, if you're down, if you're depressed, if you're sad, that can be catching too, and you can bring everybody down. So what do you want to do? Uh, and then number two, the synonyms are catchy and alluring. Maybe I can sing a song that's very catchy, but I don't think I can. Okay, uh, next we have catchment. Catch is a very weird word now. Uh, catchment, catchment, both are good. Noun from uh, 1847. One, something that catches water. Also, the amount of water caught. There's a catchment in a catchment. Two, the action of catching water. I really don't even know how to say this word anymore. Okay. Next is catchment area. Probably related. Noun from 1885. One, an area that serves to catch water. Two, the geographical area served by an institution. Next is catch on. Two words. Verb. Is it just intransitive? I think it is just intransitive. Circa. From circa 1878. One, to become aware. Synonym is learn, and then also the synonym understand. Why they are separated, I don't know. As in, didn't catch on to what was going on. Sounds like me all the time. Number two, to become popular. As in, this idea has already caught on. And you are behind the times because you didn't catch on to what was happening. Uh, next is catch out. Two words. This is a transitive verb from 1804. One, to detect in error or wrongdoing, as in, caught him out committing perjury. I don't think people say this too often, but maybe they do, Number, because I haven't caught on. Number two, to take unawares or by surprise. Next is catch penny, one word. Uh, adjective from 1748, using sensationalism or cheapness for appeal, as in a catchpenny newspaper. And our last word, yes, I will make this the last word, catchphrase, one word, noun from 1842. One, a word or expression that is used repeatedly and conveniently to represent or characterize a person, group, idea, or point of view. Do I have a catchphrase? Well, I guess my catchphrase for the end of these these episodes would be, uh, what do I say? This is Spencer dispensing information. But um, my other catchphrase, I think, would be, I don't know. Uh, and then number two, we have the number two definition for the word slogan. Slogans run. So we had catch, catch all, catches, catch can, catcher, catch fly, catching, catchment, catchment area, catch on, Catch out, how do you say this word? Catch out, catch penny, catchphrase. Uh, catchphrase is also a very fun game. So what am I going to pick as the word of the episode? What 
am I gonna pick as the word of the episode? Um, maybe I'm not even paying attention. Maybe I'll just pick catchphrase as the word of the episode because uh, I just it would be fun if everybody had a catchphrase. I feel like that would be sort of cartoony and weird. But uh, what if people just walking down the street they just said their catchphrase all the time? That's all they said. Uh, you, what what is your catchphrase? If you have a catchphrase, send me a message. That'd be great. I'd love to know what your catchphrase is. Um, and and then what would I do with it? I would do nothing with it. That's all. Okay. Thank you very much for listening. And until next time. Oh, you know what? It's holiday time. It's also stomach grumbling time. Oh boy. Uh, let's see. Still Lent, I believe. Uh, Lithuania, it is day of the book smugglers. The book smugglers? What books are they smuggling? Uh, in Latvia, it is a remembrance day of the Latvian legionnaires. In, let's see, for Finnish Americans and Finnish Canadians, it is St. Urho's Day. Well, why do they have to be Americans and Canadians? What about regular Finnish people? Do they not get to celebrate St. Urho's Day? Um, and then, this is, I don't, no, what? Okay, I mean, I see the reason why, but um, this is not an official holiday. It is a leisure day or a leisure day. It is Austin 316 day, because today is 316. Uh, and this is, uh, it's about Stone Cold Steve Austin. But uh, why is the 316? Is this a Bible reference? Uh, I don't know. See, there's my catchphrase. Um, and then the fun holiday, it is, so yesterday we had everything you think is wrong day. And then today we have everything you do is right day. Everything you do is right. Uh, everything is, it's the opposite of everything you think is wrong, which is possibly one of the most dispiriting made-up holidays out there. That's what they wrote. Uh, it's an unofficial holiday that encourages, encourages people to believe that no matter what happened before today, everything they do on this day will turn out great. It's all about positivity. That sounds kind of good, actually. We're going to end this episode there. Thank you very much for listening. And until next time, this is Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. Uh, So today is March 17th. Um, We'll talk about the holidays later. But um, if I'm remembering correctly, today is St. Patrick's Day. Yes, it is. Let's go drink some green beer and get really wasted because that's what Americans do. Uh, no, in, in Ireland, they, they don't celebrate quite as crazy as we do here. But uh, yeah, it's a good holiday. And um, I have a personal story about this day, which I probably said both in 2020 and also t- 2019. I don't remember, but I'll probably say it again. Um, okay. Oh, and before I forget, um, I actually got a new book. Uh, somebody recommended not this book specifically, but something similar. Um, It is The Indispensable Dictionary of Unusual Words, Over 6,000 Obscure and Preposterous Words to Know, Learn, and Love. And uh, this is from Josepha Heifetz Byrne. Byrne. Um, So here's what's going to happen. I haven't done it yet, but I am going to do it after I record this one episode. Um, By the way, I should say this is the most recent copyright was 2012. So it may not be the most up-to-date, but I think it should still be pretty good. Um, It's just a a book of words that are not normal and possibly not in the book, this book, the dictionary. They're in this one. Um, And uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to read one page, and that is going to go as a Patreon exclusive. Um, But I do want to say also that I strongly suggest that if you're interested in these words and maybe you want to follow along because it would be fun go buy this book um you know the i want to i want to help out oh man there's some interesting stuff in here okay um go go buy this book and you can follow along and uh if you want to hear me talk about them then you can be a become a patreon for as little as one dollar a month although if you're going to get an exclusive i think you got to pay a little bit more maybe i should bring that money down a little bit maybe i should lower that i think that would be good um, yeah, so, uh, you know, if, if you're, if you're hearing this, um, if you're somehow able to hear this before I post it, then you can jump on early, but, uh, I don't think you can do that. All right, we should really get into the words. So the first word is catch pole. Uh, one word, you could spell pole, P-O-L-E, or P-O-L-L, for some reason. 
This is a noun from before the 12th century. A sheriff's deputy, especially one who makes one who makes arrests for failure to pay a debt. So if you don't pay your debt, the uh, the catchpole is going to get you. Why is this called a catchpole? It is from Middle English catchpole, spelled differently from Anglo-French cachepole, which literally means, okay, let's do this. Uh, the, so cachepole in Anglo-French literally means chicken chaser, which is from cachère plus pole, which means chicken. Uh, from the Latin pulus, which means, oh, there's more at the word catch and poulet, or poulet, which is probably French for chicken, right? Uh, so what? How did this happen? It's a ch- it's a, you're catching the chicken? The, the, person, the person who didn't pay their debt is a chicken. All right, that's, the, the language gets weird. Okay, moving on to catch 22. So this is the word catch with a dash or a hyphen and then the number 22. Uh, and this is a noun from 1971. Number, okay, this is going to hurt your brain. Number one, a problematic situation for which the only solution is denied by a circumstance inherent in the problem or by a rule. Um, there's some, there's an example, and then it says also the circumstance or rule that denies a solution. This is a very complicated way to say what it really is. Uh, as in the example, the show business catch 22. I'll, I'll re-say this. The show business catch 22. No work unless you have an agent. No agent unless you've worked. That is a quote from Mary Murphy. Yeah, I think that that is very helpful. Uh, that's the catch 22. You got to do this. You can't do this until you do that, but you can't do that until you do this. So how do you do this or that? Uh, Okay, number uh, more definitions. Number 2A, an illogical, unreasonable, or senseless situation. 2B, a measure or policy whose effect is the opposite of what was intended. What? A measure or policy whose effect... Yeah, whatever. Uh, 2C, a situation presenting two equally undesirable alternatives. Number 3, a hidden difficulty or means of entrapment. Entrapment. And then the synonym is catch. Uh, so this is from, uh, Catch-22, which is the paradoxical rule in the novel Catch-22 from 1961 by Joseph Heller. A lot of people were assigned this book in, uh, maybe junior high or high school, but I, I don't think I was assigned this book. I think I was in the not quite high enough level of reading and comprehension, so I didn't get to read this book, and I still haven't. Uh, but I've heard it's good, so I should probably... Read it, right? Yeah, okay. Um, and uh, I, I just, I also just think the concept of this is interesting about this or that and blibbity blabbity blue. Okay, next is catch up. C A T C H U P. It is a variation of catch up. K E T C H U P. Why are they spelled differently? Every time I see this, I think of. Uh, Monty Burns in The Simpsons and he's at the grocery store because he never had to go to the grocery store and he's holding a bottle of two bottles. One is ketchup with a K, one is ketchup with a C and he goes, ketchup? Cats? Oh, actually, yeah, cat. the, the, the one with the C I think is catsup, C-A-T-S-U-P or something like that. Ketchup? Catsup? Ketchup? Catsup? And he doesn't know what they are and he can't figure it out and it's great. Okay, next is catch up. Two words with a hyphen. First form adjective from 1945. Intended to catch up to to a theoretical norm or a competitor's accomplishments. You you gotta catch up. Uh, Second form of catch up is a noun from 1948. The act or fact of catching up or trying to catch up as with a norm or competitor, as in had to play catch up. I feel like I'm always playing catch up. Um, also, an increase intended to achieve catch up. Next is catch up with no hyphen. It is two words, verb from the 14th century, and starting with transitive. 1A, to pick up often abruptly, as in the chief, no, the thief. Oh, boy, you change the first letter and it completely changes the meaning. The thief 
caught the purse up and ran. The thief caught the purse up and ran. Who, who, no, he wouldn't. You wouldn't say that. Would you say that? He caught the purse up? Okay. 1B. Synonyms are ensnare and entangle. Oh, and I think we learned about those in the synonym information from two episodes ago with Vince. As in, education has been caught up in a stultifying mythology. That's a quote from N. M. Pusey. P-U-S-E-Y. 1C. Synonym is enthrall. As in, the public was caught up in the car's magic. That's a quote from D. A. Jedlika. J-E-D-L-I-C-K-A. What is the car's magic? Who was this public? Was it like when the car was invented? It would seem magic to everybody that this thing could run on its own? That would have been magic to me back in the day. Uh, Everybody was pretty dumb back then, but they didn't know it. They were very caught up in that. Enthralled. Okay, number two. Uh, Are we on number two? Yes. To provide with the latest information, as in... Catch me up on the news. Every morning, I listen to a couple of news podcasts so I can get slightly caught up because I don't really pay much attention to the news, but it it helps. I'm more informed than I was before, but I can always be more informed. Uh, Now we have intransitive. 1A, to travel fast enough to overtake an advance party. 1B, to reach a state of parity, P-A-R-I-T-Y, or of being able to cope. As in, students who miss class have difficulty catching up. Yes, they do. Two, to bring about arrest for illicit activities. As in, the police caught up with the thieves. Oh, good. Was the, was the police chief there? The chief found the thief? 3A, to complete or compensate for something belatedly. As in, catch up on lost sleep. I've heard that you can't do that. You're pretty much starting fresh every day. 3B, to acquire belated information, as in, catch up on the news. And now I want to see an image of ketchup, you know, the tomato stuff, just being poured over all the news. If anybody would like to make images of these dumb things I think of, uh, I would love to see them. Any of you good or bad artists, please do it, especially the bad artists. If you're a bad artist... You want to make some of these, like catch up on the news? Oh, that would be wonderful. I would so love to see those, and I would probably post them. All right, next we have catch word. Man, we still have catch catch words. This is one word. Catch word is one word, noun from circa 1736. 1A, a word under the right-hand side of the last line on a book page that repeats the first word on the following page. Huh? A word under the right-hand side of the last line on a book page that repeats the first word on the following. Well, why would you do that? Why would you repeat the word? All right, maybe I need to find an example of that. Uh, 1B, synonym is guide word. This must be a very specific example. Not a normal, not like a novel book. Number two, we have the number one definition for the word catchphrase, which said a word or expression that is used repeatedly and conveniently to represent or characterize a person, group, idea, or point of view. It's a catch word. So you can have a catch phrase or you can have a catch word. Next is catchy. Has a Y at the end. Adjective from 1831. 1A. Tending to catch the interest or attention, as in a catchy title. My, I don't have a catchy title. I'm a podcaster, but that's... It's not very catchy. What? How can we make this more catchy? Uh, a podcast monkey? A senor de podcast? Uh, I don't know. Uh, 1B, easily retained in the memory, as in a catchy melody. I don't have any of those. Number two, synonyms are fitful and irregular, as in catchy breathing. Oh, well, you, you, you don't want that. If you got catchy breathing, you might want to go get that looked at because it's fitful or irregular. Three, synonym is tricky, as in a catchy question. Uh, That question, it's going to get you. It's going to catch you up. All right, we are done with the catch words. Next is cat claw. 
one word noun from 1898, a yellow flowered spiny acacia of the southwestern U.S. and Mexico. And the scientific name is Acacia Greggi. I don't know if I'm saying Acacia correctly. It is A-C-A-C-I-A. That is almost a palindrome, except for that pesky I. Uh, and then Greggi is G-R-E-G-G-I. Next is Cat Distemper. Two words, noun from circa 1950. We have the synonym Panleucopenia. P-A-N-L-E-U-K-O-P-E-N-I-A. Panleucopenia. Uh, this is a thing that cats can get, and you got to go get your cat uh, get vaccinated for cat distemper so they don't get distemper. They don't get panleucopenia. Um, uh, so, I, uh, yep, yep, you got to do that. I think it's especially bad if, if they're outdoor cats, but you shouldn't have outdoor cats. It's very unsafe for them. You got to keep them inside. And next is Kate, C-A-T-E, noun from the 15th century. It is archaic, and it means a dainty or choice food. What would a dainty or choice food be? This is from Middle English. It is an article of purchased food short for a Kate, A-C-A-T-E. That is what it is short for. It's not that much shorter. It's just a little bit shorter. Uh, From Anglo-French, akat, achat, which means purchase. From akater, uh, which means to buy. From vulgar Latin, acaptare, which is from Latin, acceptare, which means to accept. Oh, I accept this dainty or choice food that you have given me. Uh, Yes, maybe we should bring this back. And our last word for this episode is catechesis. C-A-T-E-C-H-E. S-I-S, catechesis, noun from 1753, oral instruction of cate- catechumens. Okay, that's that was not very helpful. We will see that word, uh, let's see, C-A-T-E-C-H-U-M-E-N-S. There we go. It's going to be in the next episode. <clears throat> um, and then uh, catechetical, catechetical is an adjective. And this is from the Greek katachin, which means to teach. So it's all about learning and teaching. Learning and teaching and stuffing and things. And that didn't make any sense. Okay, so we had catch phrase. No, that was in the last episode. We had catch pole, catch 22, catch up, catch up, catch up, catch up, catch word, catchy, cat claw, cat distemper, Kate and catechesis. Well, I think I'm going to pick catch 22 as the word of the episode uh, because I just think it's a very interesting concept and sometimes it's it's a thing that happens in real life. Um, you can't do this. Uh, the, the example that I think of, um, not, not just with uh, people in show business, but um, my wife is a nurse and there is this catch 22 of Well, they don't want to hire you unless you've got, you know, five years of experience in a hospital, but you can't get a job unless you know somebody or, uh, you know, that's a pretty common thing. And so, well, how do you, you you can't get the job unless you have experience, but how do you get the experience if you've blah, 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 you know, it's a catch 22. Um, Yeah, I think I did a little bit of singing in this one, so that's good enough for that. Thank you very much for listening. And now is the time that I have to read the holidays. Uh, Okay, March 17th. It is, like I said, St. Patrick's Day. It is still Lent. Um, What else? Is it anything else? Let's click on this thing. It is Children's Day in Bangladesh. In Suffolk County, Massachusetts, it is Evacuation Day. So you got to get out of there. Get out of Suffolk County today. Um, that's it for that. And then the fun holiday is Submarine Day. Submarine Day. Maybe you should go eat a submarine or go play in a submarine. No, don't go play in a submarine. Um, anyway, just real quick, I will say that my wife and I had our first date on this day, St. Patrick's Day. Um, oh, it was actually 10 years ago. So this is our sort of first date 10 year anniversary. Uh, yeah, so that's, that's that. Um, I think, uh, we're good for today. 
That's all I'm going to talk about today. Today. Today, today, today. Thank you very much for listening. And until next time, this is Spencer Spencer Information. Bye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. So we got a lot of fun words in this episode. Let us get to it. Uh, so the first word, we are at the top of page 195. The first word is catechin, C-A-T-E-C-H-I-N. It's like the chin of a cat. The catechin, no, it's, it's spelled with a chin, pronounced like a kin. Noun from 1853, a crystalline flavonoid compound, C15, H14, O6, or its derivatives having antioxidant properties and used in dyeing and tanning, and I think there is a sneeze. Coming, maybe. <coughs> Don't you hate it when it's like, oh, it's coming. Oh, no, it goes away. Oh, there it goes. Okay. Next is catechism. This is a noun from 1502. One, oral instruction. Like telling something, telling somebody to do something with your, with your voice. Number two, a manual for catechizing which uh, we'll see catechize later. Uh, Manual for catechizing, specifically a summary of religious doctrine, often in the form of questions and answers. It's That's life. We got to ask questions and find out what the answers are, or somebody tells us, and maybe we don't find the answers. 3A, a set of formal questions put as a test. 3B, something resembling a catechism, especially in being a rote response or formulaic statement rote is r-o-t-e i think that just means a rote response is something that's like pre-written maybe catechismal is an adjective and catechistic is an adjective next we have catechist c-h-i-s-t noun from circa 1563 one that catechizes yes the catechizes next one that catechizes as a a teacher of catechumens we're gonna see that one in this episode too catechumen um and then be a native in a missionary district uh, who does christian teaching next is catechize c-a-t-e-c-h-i-z-e verb from the 15th century and i think it is just transitive you are the one doing the catechizing. You cannot be catechized, I think is what this tells me. One, to instruct systematically, especially by questions, answers, and explanations, and corrections. Specifically, to give religious instruction in such a manner. Two, to question systematically or searchingly. Catechization is a noun, and catechizer is a noun. This is from the Latin catechizare from the Greek katechin, which means to teach. Oh, interesting. I th- there's a there's a horizontal line over the E, katechin, so I think that means um, it is a long E. And that's interesting that the word teach is in that word, katechin, if, if I'm pronouncing it correctly. Uh, but more literally, to din into. To din into. Okay. That is from the kata prefix plus ichin, which means to resound. Uh, that is from ichi, which means sound, and there's more at the word echo, uh, E-C-H-E. I, I assume that the Greek, Greeks pronounce that ichi, but I honestly have no idea. It could be iki, uh, and then we turned it into echo. Cool. Echo, sound, teaching, it's all related. Next, we have catechol, or catechol, noun from 1881. The synonym is catechin, which was our first word in this episode. Two, a crystalline Phenol, C6H6O2, obtained from various natural resor- uh, natural sources, but usually made synthetically and used especially in organic synthesis. Next is catecholamine. Catecholamine, noun from 1954. Any of various amines that function as hormones or neurotransmitters or both. And what are examples of some of these amines? Epiphrine, norepiphrine, norepinephrine, 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 something like that. I know I've heard it, but it's kind of a hard word to say. Uh, and then dopamine, that's the other one. Uh, okay, next is catechol, catecholaminergic, catecholaminergic, that's basically it. Uh, this is an adjective from 1970. Involving, liberating, or medicated by catecholamine. 
which was our last one. Let's say it's all related. Next is Katachu or Katachu. Uh, this was, uh, yes, okay, C-A-T-E-C-H-U. Uh, it is, I think, probably related to the next one, which is Catechumen, uh, but it might not be, actually. And that catechumen we saw in the previous uh, the previous definition for, where was it? Where was uh, catechist, uh, teacher of catechumens. Uh, but actually, I think this catechu or catechu is not related. Uh, so it's a noun from 1683. Any of several dry, earthy, or resinous, astringent substances obtained from tropical plants of Asia as A, an extract of the heartwood of an East Indian acacia. Uh, the scientific name for that one is Acacia catachu. We had a, an Acacia, and was it that in the last episode? Yeah, we had a cat claw. That's a, that was an Acacia as well. Um, and then B, we have the synonym Gambier, G-A-M-B-I-E-R. That's another kind of one of these plants. Uh, this is probably modified of the Malay Cachu of Dravidian origin, akin to the Tamil and Kannada word Kaku, K-A-C-U, which means catechu. Next is catechumen, C-A-T-E-C-H-U-M-E-N. It's, uh, you know, you want to say catechumen, but it's catechumen, noun from the 15th century. One, a convert to Christianity receiving training in doctrine and discipline before baptism. Two, one receiving instruction in the basic doctrines of Christianity before admission to to communicant membership in a church. And uh, let's see, it's from the Greek katechumenos, which is a present past participle of katechin. Uh, we talked about that before. Next, okay, the rest of these words are a little bit easier for me to understand. We have the categorical. You could also say categorical if you want, or just categoric adjective from 1588. One, synonyms are absolute and unqualified, as in a categorical denial. 2A, of relating to or constituting a category. 2B, involving, according with, or considered with respect to specific categories. And categorically is an adverb. Next is categorical imperative, noun from 1827, a moral obligation or command that is unconditionally and universally binding. Next is categorize with an S-E. It is the British variation of categorize with a Z-E, which is our next word. It is a verb, transitive verb from 1705. To put into a category. Synonym is classify. And categorization is a noun. And our last word is category. It is a, you know how to spell it, right? C-A-T-E-G-O-R-Y. Category. Noun from 1588, one, any of several fundamental and distinct classes to which entities or concepts belong. Two, a division within a system of classification. This is from the Latin categoria, from the Greek categoria, which means predication or category, from categorine, which means to accuse, affirm, predicate, which is from kata plus agora, which means public assembly, from agurine, which means to gather. So, we had catechin, catechism, catechist, catechize, no, it does catechize, catechol, catecholamine, catecholaminergic, catechu, catechumen, categorical, categorical, Im uh, imperative, categorize, and category. Well, personally, I think I am going to pick categorize as the word of the episode because I just like it when things are in order and organized and categorized by, you know, either alphabetical or their topic or something. That's why the Dewey Decimal System at the library is so great. And if you don't know what that is, I guess we'll learn about it in a couple of years, but you can also just go look it up. Uh, do I have to make a song about categorizing? Uh, maybe I can just take one of these definitions and sing it. Any of several fundamental and distinct classes to which entitles or concepts belong. Oh no, that was for category. <laughs> the, the, the synonym or the definition for categorize is to put into a category, 
Thank you very much. Oh, we, let's talk about some holidays real quick, just real fast. In uh, it's still, I think it's the thirtieth day of Lent. Uh, in Aruba, it is Flag Day. In Turkey, it is Gallipoli Memorial Day. Mongolia is Men's and Soldiers Day. In India, it is Ordnance Factories Day. Ireland, Canada, Australia have Sheila's Day. In Syria, it is Teacher's Day. Uh, let's see. It's also Aruba's Independence Day, but they celebrate that in the Netherlands? Why? How is... What? Why is the Netherlands celebrating Aruba's independence? Uh, in Mexico, it is anniversary of the expropriation of oil. It's also the iHeartRadio Music Awards, possibly. Maybe they're still happening. And then what is our fun holiday today? Let's scroll, scroll, scroll. It is uh, Absolutely Incredible Kid Day. All of you kids are absolutely incredible in my book. Thank you for listening. This has been Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. The first word is katina. C-A-T-E-N-A. Noun from uh, 1641. My brain said, no, you can't say those numbers. I'm not going to let you. 1641. A connected series of related things. Mm, Katina. Are they a series of unfortunate related things? And uh, yeah, that's that for Katina. Oh, actually, uh, it is a Latin word and it means chain, which makes sense. A connected series of related things. Why don't we know these words? Why aren't these part of our normal vocabulary? Next is catenary. Uh, Let's see. This is a noun. It looks like the British say catenary. Because of course they do. Catenary or catenary. Noun from 1788. One, the curve assumed by a cord of uniform density and cross-section that is perfectly flexible but not capable of being stretched and that hangs freely from two fixed points. Number two, something in the form of a catenary. And then catenary or catenary is also an adjective. And this is from the Latin uh, catenarius, which means of a chain. And that is that. I'm still not entirely sure. I mean, uh, you know, maybe we could see an example or something. Next is catenate. I'm assuming this is chain related. Let's see. Verb from uh, circa 1623. Uh, It's actually just transitive. To connect in a series. And the synonym is link. Catenation is a noun. And that is that. Next is cater. C-A-T-E-R. Verb from 1580, starting with intransitive. One, to provide a supply of food. Uh, Maybe the etymology will explain how this word got created, why it's related to food. Number two, to supply what is required or desired, as in catering to middle-class tastes. And I, for a second, I thought that word tastes was taters, like potaters or tater tots, catering to middle class taters. Okay, now we have transitive to provide food and service for, as in catered the banquet. I don't think caterers get enough respect. So if you're at a party, you know, when the pandemic is over, if you're at a party and there's caterers, you know, say thank you for providing me with food and making it and stuff. Uh, Next, uh, so caterer is a noun, and the etymology says this is obsolete, is from the obsolete word cater, which means a buyer of provisions, from the Middle English kator, which means short, uh, which is short for akator, which is from the Anglo-French akater, which means to buy, and there's more at the word kate, C-A-T-E, which we read two episodes ago. It was all about it was a, a dainty or choice food. Ah, so those those are related. Yes, that makes sense. Okay, next we have Caterin, C-A-T-E-R-A-N, noun from the 14th century. A former military irregular or brigand of the Scottish Highlands. Irregular? Why are they irregular? Let's see. The etymology says this is from the Scottish Middle English... Catheron, which is probably from the Middle Latin Catheranus, which is from the Scottish Gaelic uh, Keithren. Oh boy, I do not know how to say these 
Gaelic is so funky. Seathirn something, which is a band of fighting men. So we're going to say that's what the Catarin Catarin is. Next is Catter Corner, or is it Cater Corner? I'm not entirely sure. Sure. Um, It is, yeah, C-A-T-E-R, and then the word corner, all one word. You could also add an E-D at the end. Uh, But this is a variation of kitty corner, like like a like a baby cat kitty corner uh which uh you know we'll get to in the k's um but uh so i wonder if kitty corner came second because it was catter corner and they were like well cat is a cat and a kitty is also a cat and so maybe that's why kitty corner came into existence i don't know i'm just making this stuff up but it's possible next we have cater cousin uh, cater cousin, two words with a hyphen, noun from 1519, an intimate friend. So you're not actually cousins, but you're cater cousins. This is perhaps from the obsolete cater. We talked about this before, which is a buyer of provisions. How that became connected to an intimate friend, I don't know. That doesn't make any sense to me. But, uh, you know, your very intimate friend would be your cater cousin. Next is Caterpillar. When I was re-reading these words before I hit record, I I tend to just focus on the pronunciation just to make sure I get it right. And I was looking, caterpillar. And I was like, oh, it's just the word caterpillar. I was like, I was focusing so much on the pronunciation, I wasn't actually looking at the word. Noun from the 15th century. The elongated worm-like larva of a butterfly or moth. Also, any of various similar larvae. This is from Middle English, Caterpel, C-A-T-Y-R-P-E-L, Caterpel. Uh, from Anglo-French, Caterpelos, Caterpelos, uh, which literally means hairy cat. <laughs> so they thought that these caterpillars looked like hairy cats? I mean, cats are already hairy, most of them. I don't know, I, 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 that's, a, that's a bit of a stretch for me, but okay. Hairy cats are caterpillars. Uh, No, caterpillars are hairy cats, the other way around. Next is caterpillar with a capital C. It is a trademark. It is used for a tractor made for use on rough or soft ground and moved on two endless metal belts. Oh, those metal belts are so endless. Next is caterwall. Catter with a W-A-U-L. Caterwall. This is an intransitive verb from the 14th century. One, to make a harsh cry. Oh, I'm caterwauling. Ah. Two, to protest or complain noisily. And caterwaul is also a noun. What would the noun be? Oh, I guess the, the cry that you are making would be the caterwaul, probably. Uh, okay, next we have cat facing. Yeah, facing a cat, all one word. Noun from 1940. A disfigurement or malformation of fruit, suggesting a cat's face in appearance. What? 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 We gotta find an example of this. What sort of disfigurement or malformation in a fruit would make it look like a cat's face? Oh, I'm so curious now. And it's just called cat facing. Uh, Next, we have cat fight. One word, noun, from 1919. An intense fight or argument, especially between two women. Uh, yeah, um, okay. Why, why, why does this have to be between two women? Why is it especially between two women? Are men calling women cats, I guess? Why can't two men be in a cat fight? Why is it, why can't it just be called a fight? I don't know. But people, people still use this to this day. Next is catfish. One word, noun from 1612. One, any, of an order of chiefly freshwater, stout-bodied, scaleless, bony fishes having long, tactile barbells. Oh, yes, uh, me and Vince, I think we mentioned uh, catfish in our episode. I couldn't think of the word, the barbells, uh, or barb, or, or is it just barbels? Barbels. Uh, yeah, it's the things that stick off their face. Number two, a person who sets up a false personal profile on a social networking site for fraudulent or deceptive purposes. I was wondering if this was going to be in here. I wasn't sure if it was a, uh, a recent enough thing where it would have uh, not gotten in this book, but it did. Uh, I have a feeling most young people 
are going to think of that definition when they think of catfish more than the actual fish. Okay, next we have cat gut. One word, noun from 1599, a tough cord made usually from sheep intestines. But so why is the word cat in there? Uh, yeah, cat gut, I, well, I can't think of what they use it in. There are m- a bunch of things that they use it in. You know, I, I'm not a fan of that, but, uh, but yeah, so maybe we can stop using cat gut. Next we have... C-A-T-H, it is an abbreviation, cath, uh, for one, cathedral, two, catheter, or catheterization, or three, cathode. So you really have to know the context to know which cath you're talking about, because those are three completely different situations. Uh, Next, we have the prefix, cath, uh, and then it just says, see the word, uh, the prefix, kata, and I think that was the one that meant down, uh yeah we're just gonna say yes and our last word is cathar capital c a t h a r noun from 1634 one no there is no one why did i say that a member of one of various ascetic and dualistic christian sects especially of the later middle ages teaching that matter is evil and professing faith in the angelic Christ who did not really undergo human birth or death. What? A member of one of the various... Teaching matter is evil? And professing faith in the angelic Christ who did not really undergo human birth or death? I'm not sure. Catharism is a noun, and catharist or catharistic are adjectives. Uh, let's see, this is from the plural kathari, uh, which is from the Latin Greek katharoi, which is from the Greek plural katharos, which means pure. All right. Well, I don't need to say what I feel about those things because I don't totally understand it anyway. So we had katina, catenary, catenate, cater, caterin, cater corner, cater cousin, or cater. Uh, no, that was cater cousin. Caterpillar, caterpillar, caterwall, cat facing, cat fight, catfish, cat gut, cath, cath, cathar. Uh, let's see. Well, I think uh, the thing that was the most fascinating was cat facing. Um, but uh, I also liked, um, I really like cater because those people provide you with food, which is great. I wish I had a caterer in my house all the time to make me food. Um, but also just the, the first word katina was pretty interesting. A connected series of related things. I don't know. I'm just going to pick cat facing as the word of the episode. Uh, yeah. What, uh, why? I don't know why, but I think of strawberries. For some reason, the, the first fruit that came to mind was strawberry. So I'm growing some strawberries in my garden. And oh my God, one of them looks like a cat face. Let's talk about some holidays. Uh, let's see. If we're, we're, we're on March 19th, right? March 19th. Um, in Finland, it is Mina Kant's birthday. Happy birthday, Mina Kant. In Poland, it is Kashubian Unity Day. In let's see, what else? It's uh, the 31st day of Lent. In uh, the U.S., it is Red Nose Day. That's a good one, right? Let's see, what is Red Nose Day? Uh, seeks to end child poverty by funding programs that cheap, keep children safe, healthy, and educated. Yes, those are all very, very important. Um, oh, yeah, it was established uh, by the British charity Comic Relief. I remember, like, uh, Robin Williams wearing a red nose. So uh, that is a good one. Uh, let's see. St. Joseph's Day in Switzerland, Costa Rica, Malta, and Venezuela. In Mexico, it is Carpenter Day. In Belgium, it is Father's Day. In the Antwerpen region, uh, also Father's Day in Bolivia, Spain, Italy, and Portugal. And then it is Let's Laugh Day. That is the fun one here in the U.S. So let's laugh. Ha, 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 ha. Thank you very much for listening. And until next time, this is Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. How are you doing? I hope you are well. Uh, you want to hear some words that start with uh, C-A-T-H? Okay, I have some for you. 
The first one is catharsis, C-A-T-H-A-R-S-I-S, noun from circa 1775. One synonym is purgation. What is that? I don't know. Maybe the rest of the definitions will tell us. Uh, Maybe a little bit. Now we have 2A, purification or purgation of the emotions, primarily through art. Hmm. Uh, And then those emotions typically are pity and fear. So basically, purification of, say, fear, primarily through art. So is that like working through your fears through art? I think so. To be a purification or purgation that brings about spiritual renewal or release from tension. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. Three, elimination of a complex by bringing it to consciousness and affording it expression. And the etymology says this is from the Greek verb katharine, katharine, which means to cleanse or purge. That's what uh, purgation, it's all, it's purging. Um, Yeah, so catharsis is a good thing. It's very, when you're doing it, it's very cathartic, which is our next word. We got three, uh, two forms. The first form is an adjective from 1612 of relating to or producing catharsis as in cathartic drugs, also as in a cathartic experience. Cathartically is an adverb. And that's that. Second form of cathartic is a noun from 1651. A cathartic medicine. Uh, The synonym is a purgative. It's the thing that's going to help you purge stuff. Next we have cat head. Yep, it's not Cathed or cathed, it is cat head. Noun from 1626, a projecting piece of timber or iron near the bow of a ship to which the anchor is hoisted and secured. Uh, well, that came up uh, recently. I don't remember which one, but yes, that, that word came up. Um, yeah, that's. I don't know why it's called a cat head. Doesn't have any any etymology, but uh, that's what that is. Next we have cathect. C-A-T-H-E-C-T, cathect. Verb, just transitive, from 1925. To invest with mental or emotional energy. Next is cathectic. Adjective, from 1927, of relating to or invested with mental or emotional energy. Next is cathedra. It is almost cathedral, which it's not. That's our next word. But this is cathedra, with no L. Noun from circa 1797, a bishop's official throne. Well, maybe that throne is in, I mean, why do they need a throne? But anyway, this is a Latin for chair. Um, but maybe that throne is in a cathedral. First form adjective from the 14th century. One of relating to or containing a cathedra. So really, any time that there is a bishop's throne the, the building around it is is a cathedral. That is literally where we get the name cathedral from, because there is a throne in it. Two, emanating from a chair of authority. Three, suggestive of a cathedral, as in a cathedral grove of redwoods. Well, that is the kind of cathedral that I want to go to. Um, and then what would the throne be? Like a, a stump? There's actually a... A house not all that far from me where they had a tree and they cut it down and uh, they left a big a big stump you know maybe four to six feet tall and uh, they, they looks like they started to cut it into a chair uh, and then they stopped I haven't seen it for a while but um, I'm curious to know if they're ever gonna carve that stump into a, a chair or a throne of some kind I think that would be really cool I should go check up on that Okay, so now we have the second form of cathedral. Oh, by the way, I should say that there's a picture of a cathedral, the number one definition, uh, and it looks like a cathedral. It actually might be Notre Dame in France. Uh, It looks a whole lot like it, so I think that's what that is. Um, Okay, second form of cathedral is a noun from 1587. One, a church that is the official seat of a diocesan bishop. Two, something that resembles or suggests a cathedral, as in size or importance, as in a cathedral of business, also as in the sports cathedral. 
Next we have Cathepsin, noun from 1929. Any of several intracellular proteases uh, of animal tissue that aid in autolysis. And this is from the, uh, let's see, the Greek cathepsine, which means to digest. And that is from kata plus hepsine, which means to boil. So boiling, digestion, uh, yeah, that's, that's what I'm assuming it has to help, helps with digestion, autolysis. Next is Catherine Wheel. It is the name Catherine with a capital C, and then the word wheel. It is a noun from 1584. One, a wheel with spikes projecting from the rim. Uh, and then number two, the first form or the first definition for the word pinwheel, and number three, the second definition for the word cartwheel. Why is this called a Catherine wheel? It is named after St. Catherine of Alexandria, who died around the year 307, uh, was a Christian martyr. But how was that? Why did she have spikes projecting from her real wheel rims? What? I don't understand that. Maybe we have to look more into this one. I don't know. But yes, a Catherine wheel, I guess, has spikes coming out of it. Next is catheter uh hey sharon maybe she can't hear me i was going to see if she wanted to talk about the word catheter uh because she's a nurse and she's had to do that uh okay this is a noun from 1601 a tubular medical device for insertion into canals vessels passageways or body cavities usually to permit injection or withdrawal of fluids or to keep a passage open. Compare to the synonym balloon catheter. This is from the Greek catheter, kathenai, or the, the verb kathenai, which means to send down, which is from kata plus hianai, which means to send. Then, then the kata makes it down, to send down. And there's more at the word jet, of all things. Okay, next we have a related word. It is catheterization, noun from circa 1852. So 250 years later, the use of or introduction of a catheter uh, um, as in or into the bladder, trachea, or heart. Catheterize is a transitive verb. Um, you, you know, a lot of older people uh, either have to have these uh, regularly, or if you're going into surgery, you get one of these put in uh, to help with stuff. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a thing that happens. You know, sometimes younger people have to do it too, especially in medical situations. But, uh, you know, hopefully none of you have to be awake when this is happening. Okay, next we have cathexis. C-A-T-H-E-X-I-S. Noun from 1922, investment of mental or emotional energy in a person, object, or idea. Investment of mental or emotional energy. If I'm investing energy into you, I am uh, doing the action of cathexis, something. Uh, let's see, this is from the Greek cathexis, which means holding, from katechin, katechin which means to hold, or fast, or occupy, from kata plus etching, which means to have, or hold, to have, or to hold. Um, and then there's more at the word scheme, S-C-H-E-M-E. -E. Okay. And our last word is cathode. Uh, and so, let's see, in this episode, we had all three of the, uh, of the, um, the words that can be abbreviated to cath, which was in the last episode. We had cathedral, catheter, catheterization, and cathode. C-A-T-H-O-D-E. Noun from 1834. One, the electrode of an electrochemical cell at which reduction occurs. 1A, the negative terminal of an electrolytic cell. 1B, the positive terminal of a galvanic cell. 2 the electron emitting electrode of an electron tube, and then broadly, the negative electrode of a diode. 
and then compare to Anode, which, boy, I think we read that two years ago. Uh, Cathodal is an adjective. Cathodally is an adverb. Cathodic or cathodic is an adjective, and cathodically is an adverb. This is from the Greek kathodos, which means way down, plus, uh, which is kata, kata plus hodos, which means way. Okay, so we had catharsis, cathartic, cathead, cath, cathect, cathectic, cathedra, cathedral, cathepsin, catherine wheel, catheter, catheterization, cathexis, and cathode. Well, there were some good ones in here. Maybe I will post pictures of a couple of them, like a cathedral and a Catherine wheel and maybe a cat head. But I think I am going to pick, um, I guess, catharsis as the word of the episode because it's just a thing that is really good. When you have a cathartic experience or a cathartic something, uh, that's, that's good. That's helpful. It is helping your physical and mental well-being, and we all need that, right? Uh, does that mean I have to sing a song about catharsis? If you've got some pity and fear, you got to get rid of your brain, then go through something that, oh, see, that would be cathartic. Go through something cathartic. You need some catharsis in your life. Uh, all right. Oh, yeah. Okay, so here, let's see, holiday time. It is, uh, it is, it is, what is it? Boy, there's a lot of things going on. Okay, it is, uh, oh, the Great American Meat Out in the U.S. Uh, people eat a lot of meat today, even though it's still Lent. Uh, and it's Independence Day. It celebrates the independence of Tunisia from France. So it is Tunisian Independence Day. In the United For the United Nations, it is International Day of Happiness. So all the countries that are part of the United Nations. It, also with the United Nations, it is International... Franco- Francophonie Day, uh, which is, I guess, the yeah, it's French French Language Day. It is National Native HIV AIDS Awareness Day in the U.S. It is also World Sparrow Day. It is the GLAAD Awards, G-L-A-A-D. Uh, supposedly, those are happening today. Um, let's see, what else? International Day of Happiness, Persian New Year. It's the beginning of spring. That's good. Doesn't feel like it right now because it is, oh, let's see. It is two degrees where I am right now. That's Fahrenheit. Two degrees Fahrenheit. (sighs) Um, It is the autumnal equinox in Spain. Wait, wouldn't that be? But then it also says spring equinox. In Spanish, they call it autumn equinox, I guess. Um, what else, what else, what else? Finland, March equinox, Portugal, spring begins, spring, spring, spring. And then our fun holiday is World Storytelling Day. So go tell some stories. That's all, uh, That's my story for today. Thank you very much for listening. And until next time, this is Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye.